This week, tune into the Paul Feinbaum Show as I discuss... The delicious taste of ice cold, Dr. Pepper. Larry Culpepper? Hey, I'm in the middle of a promo. Sorry, Finey. The fans are craving so much Dr. Pepper, I thought I'd borrow some of your airtime. Security! Hey, look, whether you're watching college football or calling to some guy's radio show, Dr. Pepper makes college football that much sweeter. So grab some of your local store today. Can I have one of yours? Hey, we got a caller. You're on the Larry Culpepper Show with your host, Larry Culpepper. That's it. That's Dr. Pepper, the one fans crave. Max Brothouse, Randy Scott, in for Ryan. Do you smell my fragrance? It's, yeah, it's... It's uh, Lhomme from Yves Saint Laurent. It's, it's, it's earthier than, than usual. Uh, we were talking about your outfit. Again, explain what's on the sleeves, because people are going to see it's them. It's a suspender. It looks like a garter, but it's huh. a suspender, and uh, just puts it up there. I wouldn't have bought this. My wife, uh, my wife buys me these clothes, and I just put them on, and... A few days ago, I saw Max Scherzer wearing that. It looked really shazzy, and I saw someone on one of the uh, the uh, celebrity magazines at the airport wearing them too. And you know, I've been wearing this for about a year or so. So my wife's got her finger on the pulse. So I just let her take charge of dressing me like a like a porcelain doll. I continue to dress uh, like an intern around here, and that's kind of uh, it's kind of my brand now. You can come much. over, hey, if you want. You can come over. We'll see. Maybe we can get her a little side business going. Be like, hey, dress I- the anchors. <laughs> that's a good story. I need a shirt that has a pocket that looks like a pocket square. That's what I need. Oh, I didn't have that one too. Yep. What, there we go. So it's multi layered. Love it. I love it. Um, so over the next hour, I, I think college football heavy would be a Oof. nice way a nice way to put it. Obviously, the Zeke Elliott story that a lot of shows are leading with. Uh, a lot of shows are spending a lot of time on today. You know, nothing's changed with regard to that from them to us. But we'll give our spin on it. Uh, another situation where the NFL maybe doesn't come off. Uh, looking all that good, maybe. <laughs> but last night, Max, college football back. Not only on this network, but but elsewhere. Ohio State, Indiana. I know you're not the biggest Big Ten guy in the world, but interesting to see the Buckeyes start on the road in conference. Well, I I, I think Ohio State's going to be number one at the end. I think we got a little bit of, a little bit of a scare there, but I think we will see what's going to happen by and large in this season because we have these powerful teams. We don't know all the personnel about them, but we're going to discover them. We discover a little bit of Ohio State. And uh, Dave Fleming, who was calling the the game last night, made a point. He goes, this is these third-string guys from Ohio State shutting down the Indiana. Just too much depth. So I think Ohio State is, is going to be there because of that depth. And I think we'll see similar things with Alabama, maybe Florida State. But Ohio State, Michigan with some recruits is a team that could do the same thing. But I I think people might be down on Ohio State a little bit because of that. I'm not on, down on them at all. It looked like they're working things out, and I think it's it's going to be a very rosy future for them. You think Ohio State's going to be number one at the end of the I think they'll be the number one team. Number one team going into the playoffs. They'll be the top They'll be the top the, seed. Correct. Okay. I think they're losing next week to Oklahoma. To Oklahoma? Yeah. I just, I'm not buying any of the Big 12. I, I want to, and I see a lot of Baker Mayfield Heisman. I see a lot of Oklahoma getting in there. I just yeah. I don't think so. I just don't think they have this depth. I don't think they have those, these monsters on the offensive-defensive line that Ohio State or Alabama has. These guys just disrupt. They just recruit at a different level. Well, Greg Shiano, I'm glad you brought up the Ohio State defense because I remember— it's, It was insane. I'm, you see the guys, they just pour out one after another. The NFL defensive linemen in their third string. Well, okay, great. I'm glad you're throwing out NFL defensive <laughs> linemen as well because Greg Shiano is the guy— who, what, four or five weeks ago, beginning of August, said this is the most talented defensive line I've ever had. And they said, Coach, I know it was forgettable for a lot of Buccaneer fans, but perhaps you've forgotten. <laughs> you were an NFL head coach as well. He wasn't well. thinking about Rutgers, you think? <laughs> you had some great You had some great talent in the NFL. You had Michael Bennett. You had uh, uh, Gerald McCoy. Yeah. You, know, you had some great talent, and he doubled down on it. Wow. This is with the Big Ten Network. He said this is the most talented defensive line I've ever had. Okay, well, that defensive line last night, they weren't shredded by Indiana, but they gave up a 400-yard passing game to a guy in Richard La- Lego, 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 my well, ego. Well, I mean, 410, and a lot of that is thrown from behind, so the yardage can be inflated. He threw the ball 65 well, times, but there was a stretch here where the Buckeye defense looked a little pedestrian. Yes, and you, I know you were probably asleep for this because you have to be up early because of your uh, now your Washington Post cover boy on your <laughs> yes. new morning show yeah, with yeah. Sage and Jay. Mm-hmm. So you're probably in bed at 7 p.m. Tricycle doesn't move without the third wheel, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of how that <laughs> kind of how that well, works. Hey, Randy, no one's prouder than you. I'm so thrilled to see you <laughs> in, in, in there in that situation. Thanks, but I, buddy. Herb Street came on with Van Pelt later, and he made, he said the, the weak link for that Ohio State team is the defensive backfield because they're new, not that they're not talented. Yeah. So that Indiana had to get those passes off, and he did, and they took advantage of that. And eventually, three-step three drops or whatever, you lower it down a bit, and that defensive line is going to 
close the distance, which they did. And that secondary is going to get better. So you just look at that defense. It looks like an NFL. I hate to say it. It looks like an NFL team. It isn't an NFL team. It looks like an NFL team. Strong, big, fast. We've been talking, uh, you know, Trevor Maddich all week, some of our other college football brain trusts, and uh, they're talking about how, you know, this is cornerback you at Ohio State. It's no longer tailback you, cornerback you because of the talent that they turn out. It's, you know what? It's time for Straight Talk, brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless, best phones, best networks, no contracts. As we get into the two things, Max, that we think will happen this season and the two things we think won't happen. And I think maybe you've already touched on one. The one thing you think will happen, I mean, you're all in on the Buckeyes. Yes, and a part of me is I think they'll, the schedule and they'll be able to navigate through the Big Ten. I, I think you have Michigan. Michigan is the intriguing team to me because I think a lot of people are knocking them down a bit because they lost all those guys to the, the NFL. But I think we'll find out how well Jim Harbaugh is recruiting and if he's doing something. I think coaching-wise, he's... He's one of those guys right there with Urban Meyer, right below Nick Saban. I think coaching-wise with the, with the talent, I get the feeling Michigan's going to be there at the end. With guys, we don't know who they are, but they will emerge. So I still think Ohio State's another level. But the one thing I think that will happen is Alabama will run through the SEC. And I'm, we're going to talk about this throughout the program, but the SEC, I'm, I'm not an SEC basher. I would love to see the SEC second, third, fourth place teams move up so Alabama gets challenged and gets beaten once or twice a year. I don't think they're going to get touched. I just don't think the talent's there. I like Auburn enough. That's at the end. But the SEC East teams, jury is still out. I just don't think the gap has been closed with Alabama. If not, maybe Alabama's even grown it the last two years. We're going we're gonna to go next level. We're going to go deep on the SEC here uh, coming up top of the 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern hour, efforting Peter Burns from the SEC Network, uh, our, our you know sort of sister, our brothers in arms here in college football arms uh, down in Charlotte, North Carolina. But I, I think with regard to what you said about Alabama, I th- here's the one thing I expect, the one thing I think will happen. Alabama and Auburn, the Saturday after Thanksgiving, that's not only for the SEC, uh, well, certainly for a trip to Atlanta, That that that's a college football playoff game. I, I think both teams are undefeated. Getting to that to point. To Auburn. Yes, Auburn, Alabama, both teams undefeated. Getting to that point, whoever wins that's not only going to Atlanta, whoever wins that is going uh, to the college football playoff. So that's one thing I think. So you got Ohio State, you got Bama. The other thing I think, you know, people are kind of, they're focusing on Ohio State last night. Oklahoma State, I know it was Tulsa, but Oklahoma State, is is somehow lying in the weeds here. They look tremendous. They're capable. That game of putting, was over the half against a good Tulsa team. Are they in the AAC or the? Tul- I, I'm not no, sure where the, Tulsa is. Tulsa I'll find out. Was, I'll check my magazine that I brought in. Do it. Yeah, it, my magazine. So my reference book. <laughs> he got it at a Borders. I've never. I haven't seen. I haven't seen <laughs> I that. No, it's, I don't know. It's not a company. It's not, it's not a company line. But I just no. saw it and I picked it because it's easy to. It's less pages. Less pages right. is better for me. More pictures, better for me as well. ESPN, the magazine available on newsstands everywhere and wherever magazines can be downloaded. Let's put that out there because that is definitely not an ESPN uh, product. But just because you already shredded through it, the other thing. I, so I, I got Oak State as a, as a college football playoff team. I do. All right. They you, can put you, sixty you, up on you in a in a heartbeat. They got. You think Oklahoma is going to beat? Ohio State, yes. but you think Oklahoma State's going to get Oklahoma? There you go. All right, just check that's it. it. So the two things, the, the, what won't happen? Do you want to get into the negative, or you want to say, why don't we put a pin in that? We'll get to the two college football things we th- we don't think will happen. That's coming up as we also get into the Zeke Elliott situation. Straight Talk brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless, nationwide coverage on America's largest and most dependable 4G LTE networks. Tulsa in the American Athletic Conference. Boom. Nailed that. Uh, so predicted we got, to finish second in the West. So we have uh, college, plenty more college football to unpack on last night. The one stat that Indiana was able to do against Ohio State that no one else will be able to do the rest of the season, and quite frankly, the Hoosiers were lucky to do in their own right. And then, of course, Zeke Elliott files an alleged, uh, you know, we'll call it NFL conspiracy. We'll unpack all we know for certain about that and some of the things that we think the NFL might be uh, messing up here on the Rosillo Show with Max Bartos and Randy Scott on ESPN Radio. Okay, keep your eyes closed. Okay. I want to show you my first ever painting. Mm, All right. Okay. Open your eyes. Oh, that's a lot of colors Mm -hmm. (laughs) and shapes. So be honest. What do you think? Well, uh, I like how if you switch to Geico, you could save hundreds of dollars on car insurance. Oh, yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah. Here, why don't I hold your paintbrush while you call them? Geico, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. The two things that we think won't happen this season, that we don't think will happen, and for me, 
I don't think the ACC gets a team into the college football oh. playoff. Why? Uh, it's more personal between you and I. No, it's I, I. You know, Florida State loses tomorrow. I think Florida State is going to be the the, the team with the best shot. I just see them going up against three. I think they're going to be three undefeated teams that are no brainers to get in: Oak State, uh, Ohio State, and um, no, Oak State, uh, USC. I'm sorry, USC and Alabama. So then you're going to have a one loss Ohio State battling with a one loss Florida State. Let's say maybe with a one loss. Louisville or Clemson, you know what I mean? Like I just feel like that water's going to get so muddy. You, I you can respect see. the ACC too much. I I don't respect the ACC at all. He's, I think is part of my deal this year, just this year. Uh, Last year, wagon. Yeah, I, I I would agree with you because I think the depth is going to be a concern because all the good ACC teams are on the same division: Florida State, Clemson, Louisville, and I think you throw NC State. You have Miami. People love NC State. People this love year. NC, but they're strong. I mean, they and you know, as a Florida State guy, I'll tell you, they just always give the Seminoles issues. So. That could really muck yeah. things up there uh, a, a fair bit. Uh, I, I kind of want to say that something won't happen. Is that we th- th- there will not be a team like South Florida who's getting some love running the table, getting anywhere near the college football playoff because of a point you made. I think, and there's also the talk maybe a two loss team makes the playoffs. Neither of these things are going to happen because I think they're going to be undefeated teams. When you look at the yeah. schedules, they're very favorable for for several for several of them. I mean, even a school like Wisconsin, if they can get hot, their schedule is cake if they beat Ohio State in a Big 10 championship game, they'll be there and I think USC has that potential as well. So, uh I think it's going to be messy with undefeated teams at the end. That's going to repel some of the nicer stories or two lost teams from getting into any further along. I think there's a real chance South Florida is the highest ranked I think they team will be, in but... the state of Florida. By the okay, end of now, this now you're going to. By the time we go into the college now football gone, playoff, no, now you made it. There's personal. a real chance. No, no, I, no. Be, there's a real chance. Your offensive line, Matt, Max. Nah. How nah. come Alabama and all these? Hey, they just reload. We can't reload an offensive line. We'll have to put know. two that, guys in there. Talk to Jimbo. That's you know, like a Jimbo thing. We, I don't have, we got I don't a mobile quarterback. They're gonna they're gonna build it to protect him. Better be mobile. And gonna the defense is gonna again. wear out the other offense. All right. All so right. that's so that's our college football. We'll get obviously much more into it. The one stat, quite frankly, that. <laughs> Indiana hung its hat on four of six catchable balls made with one hand. They made six attempts at one-handed grabs last night, and they caught four of them. Yeah. That's not going to happen again <laughs> against the Ohio State. Quarter. Not the Yeah, that's true. It's not going to happen again against Ohio State. So everybody was kind of... That game, by the way, lasted almost four hours. That was, it. I, yeah. it was a hard watch at times. It was. I was, was. like grinding. I was like, oh, my wife goes, that game not over. I go, I'm yeah. gonna... I go are you watching New Mexico State, Arizona State now? <laughs> nice try. <laughs> Sorry, I just it's like she's in the room. It was You're getting close there. That's good. Uh, speaking of another hard, how's this? Segway. Hard watch to another hard watch. Uh, this situation with, Ezek- with, with Ezekiel Elliott is is interesting because it puts you, if you really want to be rational about it and you really want to be objective, it's tough not to feel something in the way of sympathy, empathy for the guy accused of domestic violence in this. It's really tough because of some of the details we're learning about the NFL, the investigation, disregarding the findings of the lead investigator who herself believed Zeke should not be suspended. The NFL ran through that stop sign, no, no criminal charges, and handed, and handed this down. Like, it's, it's, it's murky waters here in terms of just a moral standpoint. Well, and, and to your point... And this is such a delicate issue. And look, we're, we, it's abundantly clear, and we know why. And it's you want uh, due process, and you want all the evidence to be held up in a certain way. And if it's not there, it's not there. And for Ezekiel Elliott, under these circumstances, to your point, I, I think it was great. I think you, you put it perfectly. You feel for the, the process. He has cooperated. He's done all these things, and yet he's clear in the – in the court of public opinion, and some not the court of public opinion, but the courts there, but not through the NFL. And now they're going to rule with a heavy fist because of things that have happened in the past. It's becoming more evident to that as well. And it's they should all be judged on individual basis. And right now, if you look at this, it's hard to say that if even if you are, even if you haven't heard everything completely clearly, it's hard to say this is a six game suspension, if any game suspension. The NFLPA is pushing for zero games, as they should. The they NFL should go from. If there's one game that's going to hang over Ezekiel Elliott. The NFLPA filed a request for a temporary restraining order in the Eastern District of Texas calling for the courts to block any suspension of Elliott that might be upheld by NFL arbitrator Harold Henderson, according to a court filing obtained 
by ESPN. Harold Henderson's most There's a preemptive re- strike here for him. What, he, <laughs> well, make sure. one of his most recent higher profile domestic violence appeals that he heard surrounding this within the NFL. It was before the new domestic violence policy that the NFL handed down where six games is the baseline. Six games is the punishment, but it was Greg Hardy. And that went from 10 games to four games. Hardy was actually ch- charged. Yes. Hardy was never found guilty because Hardy's accuser never testified. They couldn't investigators toward the end could not get a hold of her. She'd made, she failed to make herself available. Some people say, all right, maybe the deal was worked out. Maybe whatever. I don't, and you know what? If a deal was worked out, I don't have a problem with that. She doesn't get anything. It doesn't help her life if Greg Hardy is suspended. If she gets money from it, if she works out some sort of settlement and that improves her life, fine. God bless her. More power to her. With this situation with Tiffany Thompson and Zeke Elliott, we know the police were called. We know pictures of bruises on Thompson exist. That much you can't deny. The records are there. The photos are there. What happened to surround all of that is up to the NFL to piece together. It's up to the NFL to get right. And again, Max, they can't do that. They're unable to do it. And at this point, I think you have to, if this blows up in the NFL's face, the NFL has to look at this and almost say, look, we're we're out. We're going to let the courts do what they have to do, and we will abide by those laws, by those uh, verdicts. Because if the NFL keeps putting their foot in it, and right now this is heading right in that direction again, the NFL should focus on football, I think, I, I, and let the mm-hmm. courts do this because it's – it's not adding up. We got more on this, including what the motive might be. Like, why would the NFL? The NFL's out to get Zeke Elliott. Why? It's it's the Yankees of the NFL. The Dallas Cowboys are the preeminent brand, and this is one of their biggest young superstars. So I, I fail to see any reason why they would go after him. Although I felt the same way about about Brady. Uh, there are similar, you know, America's team. Captain America, all of that. So there's much more to unpack with this. Reminding you, though, here, the Ryan Rossillo Show, if you're at work, you can stream all three hours of the show on ESPNRadio.com. It Football throughout this first hour. Back to the college game when we come back. Heather Dinich, our ESPN college football uh, playoff reporter, on some of the implications, like we both think. Who's in, who's out at the end of the year? ACC out, Big 12 out. We'll see. With Max Bredos. Should I show her this? You sure that? Sure, the magazine? Okay. Yeah, yeah. with Max Pretos, I'm Randy Scott. It's the Ryan Rosillo Show on ESPN Radio. Classing up the joint on the Rosillo Show here on ESPN Radio is Heather Dinich. Need a little bit of that. Heather Dinich, our ESPN uh, college football playoff reporter, insider, everything. Right off the bat, I think we all come from different vantage points with regard to the college football playoff. Max thinks the Big 12 gets left out. I think the ACC gets left out. Who's right? You just rule right now. Just drop the gavel. Who? Who's Who's right? Okay, I'm sorry. Max is right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. That was Heather Dinich. Are you well, I'll see you guys. Later. She's going to play off. Sweeten the pot, though. Let's go. All right. Why? But, why? Well, okay. Well, here's the thing, and this is the truth about the situation. The Big 12 championship game is the X factor in this year's college football playoff, and it could easily be exactly what that conference needs to get the extra push into the top four. Or it could just completely wipe somebody out. Because it could go one of two ways. Here's the thing. The Big 12 is the only Power 5 conference guaranteed to have its top two teams playing. That's a great thing if you have a number one Alabama or a number two Florida State playing like a number 23 ranked team from from the opposing division. Right? Unbalanced Mm -hmm. divisions. Not a great matchup. Whatever. Florida State, Georgia Tech. Something like that. Yeah, who cares? Right? Doesn't do anything for them. Problem is... What if you have a, a number one, number two Oklahoma team playing a three-loss K-State team in that championship game? Doesn't it necessarily carry as much weight, right? So, mm-hmm. But the good thing is, and Lincoln Riley talked to me about this, it's the human element. Finally, on the one day when the whole selection committee is sitting down together to watch these championship games, the Big 12 has a show to put on, okay? I think that can only help. It can only help, but if... Oklahoma if, doesn't lose, doesn't beat Ohio State. This is a moot point. And the Big 12, as you said, they're going to go the top two teams at the end of the ten teams of season. One and two are going to play. Right. So we'll, 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 it'd be. I, I want the Big 12 to succeed. I don't want it to be missing out a year in year year ago. But I think these other ones conferences are so strong from an ACC perspective, and as a Florida State perspective, be even more specific. I look at this game Saturday, and a lot of people, you know, a loss to Alabama is almost better than a win against anybody else at this point because it's. But that won't hurt Florida State down the road. But is if they lose down the road in the ACC, and a good chance they would, uh, is there a, is there a window for a two loss team to make the playoffs? Yes, but I think only from this game on Saturday. 
I don't think anybody else okay. can do it. So two loss Bama or a two loss Florida State. Yes, and okay. if we're going to be perfectly realistic about this, I think Alabama is the only team in the country that can actually pull that off. They're not going to get two losses. They can lose a close. Let's say they lose a close one to Auburn. Things get funky in the SEC West, Kick and six. somehow, somehow they still wind up winning the division mm-hmm. in the SEC. And you've got a team whose only loss is to the ACC champs and a close conference loss. Hmm. Well, let's see what happens in the Big 12, right? And to your point of the ACC getting left out, I think that's the only conference that can get two teams in. All right. <laughs> Talking with uh, Heather Dinich, our ESPN College Football Playoff Reporter. Why? That would make you look very foolish, by the way, Randy. So, at, the, at the end of all this, I'll bring it up. So if Two those, ACC teams get in. Of those, all right, it, one of them has to be Florida State. Right. Right? It sounds like that's a condition of this Absolutely. farcical nonsense of the ACC getting two teams in. No, but okay, but, but who, yeah. who in your mind, looking at schedule, just based on who you're talking to, has the best chance of being that other ACC team? Is that a Clemson? Clem- yes, okay. Clemson. The ACC has two top five teams right now. Now, we all know these preseason rankings are, you know, blindfold, throwing darts, whatever, right? But if Florida State and Clemson, if Florida State beats Alabama and Clemson beats Auburn, okay, and you've got, an, let's say, an undefeated Florida State team, Clemson, maybe their only loss is to Florida State, which goes on and wins the ACC title. Anybody remember a team that didn't win its conference but still got into the playoff even though it didn't win its division? Oh, that's right. It happened last, last year, year yeah. with yes. Ohio State, State, right? It's possible. It is. I don't it's like a that. long shot. I don't like that rule. I, I think the conference champ is, is, is a way to make these – Make the organ the organize the committee mm-hmm. make it easier for them, but obviously there's a lot of things in, in, in play here. The SEC we've been talking about uh, the gap being closed for Alabama. I think is key to enjoying the, the the SEC season. Do you see that at all? Is there the pursuing pack of teams that could complicate? You mentioned Auburn, but is there some teams there that could lift the SEC profile a bit? Look, nobody's talking about LSU BYU this weekend. Uh oh, and we should be because. First of all, LSU needs to win this game for the SEC because when you look beyond Alabama, we've got, what, number 12 Auburn right now, number 13 LSU. Mm -hmm. ACC, most other conferences probably have two top top 10 teams, right? So if LSU and Auburn don't live up to the hype, once again, the SEC has traded depth for Alabama and everybody else. That's cool if Alabama goes on to win a national title. I'm sure the SEC will be okay with that. Right. But if you really want to compare conferences and you're talking about an ACC that has a ranked NC State, ranked Miami, ranked Clemson, ranked Louisville, ranked Florida State. I like how you brought that up. You, you, do you think at BYU might have a little, uh, might have a sniff at this game? I can see what your <laughs> eyes light up. That <laughs> LSU, what is it, 13 and a half? LSU favored by 13 and a half? Ah, BYU's got a game under that, belt? We'll mark that down. Right. Uh, I said, and Max shot it down, and I said it more to get a rise out of Max, uh, I thought maybe South Florida had a chance to be the highest ranked team from the state of Florida by the end of the season. That yeah. had, had a chance. They're coming at 19. They look good. Did you see UCF last night? Their schedule's cake. What? Scott Frost, UCF? I did not they see They might U- be up there, too. I didn't see UCF there. last All night. Right. Is there a team? that you can identify, whether it's outside the top 15 or outside the Power 5 Conference, who could really give the committee something to think about on that weekend right around Thanksgiving? Well, I think South Florida is a smart pick with Quentin Flowers at quarterback, Charlie Strong. I mean, they've got a team, okay? That's probably the most popular. Smart pick, she said, And Max. smart pick right now. <laughs> um, another, another team to think about that nobody is talking much about is NC State. And uh, I say that because they probably have – one of the best defensive lines in the conference. You're smiling at me. You're not buying it. We brought this up about 30 minutes ago. We talked about a little bit. No, NC State saying Did like. You? you and brought I just it up. Said, I'll give you credit. You brought it I up. I said on that side of the ACC with Louisville, NC State, Florida State, and Clemson, someone's going to beat somebody that's not supposed to, I think. Right. Well, you look at NC State last year. We're talking about an overtime loss at Clemson, and I think it was like four-point loss to Florida State. You have to get over the hump, right? You got you have to do that in in order to even become serious in the conversation. You have to beat one of those two teams. But if we're talking dark horse, that's what a dark horse is, right? A team you're not – it's not going to happen? Well, maybe. I don't know. Randy was hoping after their big win over uh, Holy Cross that UConn could be that dark horse, no? No, yeah. No. I, you know, <laughs> it's one thing to hope. It's one thing to be All realistic. Right. I look at that schedule for NC State, though. We're going to learn something about them right, right out of the gate against, against South Carolina. I yeah, mean, that's against, an interesting – I think interesting. they thump. I think they thump South Carolina. Fighting must champs, yeah. you think so? Uh, Heather, anything else you feel like we need to know now that's going to play a factor in what we get come playoff time? Um, well, 
there are three new committee members. I don't know if people realize that. Gene, I think that's important. That's yeah. important. Gene Smith at Ohio State, the athletic mm. director there, former Virginia Tech coach Frank Beamer, and a lot of people probably don't know Chris Howard. He's the president at Robert Morris University, played football at Air Force. Guys, I can't hang with him. He's too smart. He's a Rhodes Scholar. He is brilliant, and he's Nerd. going to bring <laughs> that sort of Condoleezza Rice type Gravitas to the position yeah, here. Yeah, okay, absolutely. Right. That's good to know. And you can hang with anybody. That is <laughs> Heather Dinich, our ESPN College Football uh, Playoff Reporter. A reminder, get in touch with the show through our 1-800-Flowers Twitter feed. For Max, it's at Embredos ESPN. For Heather, it's at CFB Heather. And for me, it's at Randy Scott ESPN. Heather, thank you. Thanks, guys. We'll see who's right about the ACC in a few months' time. Up next, Kyrie Irving introduced as a member of the Boston Celtics and possibly giving himself... A compliment. It is the <laughs> Ryan Rosillo show with Max and Randy on ESPN Radio. Your Instagram game is it's just permeated so many aspects of your life. Rudy was in here and I was talking to him and then I yeah. just... So Rudy was in here and he just stirred it up and then he wound you up, getting you going on football and you were excited about EJ Manuel. And, yeah, I was talking about the backup job at, at, the Raiders. at the Raiders. You know I'm a Raiders fan. I know you're a Raiders fan. That's why I brought it up to you too. All right. I'm kind of surprised. I wonder what happened to Matt McGloin. I got I to gotta jump in on this. It is the Ryan Rosillo Show on ESPN Radio. Hey, when you're hanging out uh, at another kid's soccer tournament or barbecuing with your in-laws, make sure you take your ESPN app with you to stay up on everything happening in sports. It's simple, it's easy, and it keeps you connected. Take ESPN with you everywhere. Download the ESPN app uh, now. So, uh, Max, I, <laughs> you brought it up again. I'm giving you constant credit here. Labor Day weekend, and what's the story that SportsCenter broke in with earlier in Boston we should be talking about playoff baseball push uh, and football and all that stuff. We are in the month of September. Yeah. And the NBA is still making us lick our chops. <laughs> and is that is that a It's true. No, it's true. Wet our whistle towards the NBA season. We're excited about it cuz look, I see Kyrie Irving and Gordon Hayward stand up there being announced with their jerseys and I'm like, first of all, you you, you wrap around those players, not so much Hayward, but certainly Kyrie Irving, who's been associated with one team and has been in the limelight so much. We just haven't seen enough jazz games. All, all due respect to everyone in Salt Lake City yeah. and around there in the Beehive State. But we've seen Kyrie Irving with that one jersey, and then you see him in this green, and you're, wow. I go, I can't wait to see that. I cannot wait to see this team because it's become like the fifth or sixth team that has improved exponentially in the offseason. You're like, this has made the regular season, which was a struggle, that much better. And look... There might be another week or 10 days of the NBA taking more off the plate of the NFL. Because the NFL season's here. They're off season. They, they missed the boat. <laughs> it, feel, it feels like everybody's trying to get their news out there, make their waves, make their splashes before September 7th when the NFL season starts up. I think once the NFL season starts up, we're, we're cooked. We're done. It's all NFL. Right. College football, too. But it's all football. But you think... We'll talk about the Kyrie Irving thing here shortly, but you think the uh, NBA is taking stock of all this and go, whatever we did, let's map it out again. Mm -hmm. We're going to be free agents. We can keep this this active, our deadlines here and there when they begin, when they end, so we can seize this window because it comes with the huge dollar sign. There's no doubt about it because people are buying jerseys, people are getting engaged, people are getting ramped up for the NBA. I'm not trying to shoehorn hockey in where it doesn't belong here, but hockey. one thing. Hold on. I, I was talking to some radio guys in Toronto a couple weeks ago, and they said, what can the NHL do to become relevant, you know, to really break in again in, in the U.S.? And I said, the playbook's there. It, it's there. It's the NBA. Do what the NBA is doing. But can you imagine if the NBA had an expansion draft this offseason as well? All the craziness, plus we're putting a team in Vegas, and here's the expansion draft, and you can only protect three or four guys on each round. You know what I mean? That's how far back the NHL is. They had that this summer, and it barely registered because the NBA was such a, a, a goliath. Well, you don't have these recognizable star powers. No, no one has. No, no sport has right now. This is mm -hmm. unprecedented that we know the top 20, 30 NBA players. Everyone does. And that they change franchises. And they change franchises so willy-nilly. And one of them did officially today. That's Kyrie Irving. Here's Kyrie, and... It, Want to get your reaction? Listen to one word here on how he describes his decision to ask for a trade. Honestly, coming off of the finals loss and kind of not wallowing in my sorrows, but trying to figure out the next step in order to achieving that goal and um, in doing that uh, made it just a very courageous decision in order to take my my myself and, and my intent and want to be a part of something bigger than myself and. Whew. When Boston came and knocking, I was answering. So um, it, it was it was pretty awesome about the way it all transpired. 
Okay, what word jumped out? Courageous. courageous. And it, it is courageous. You, you Really? To ask I, for a trade? I think because he's in this NBA where everyone is heading towards the contenders, where Kevin Durant, you know, it, it, many people in Oklahoma City said he sold his soul to the devil to leave the team to become a member of the Warriors. He's been vindicated, certainly. But you move towards where you win a title. That is so important. Kyrie Irving has a title. Maybe that's fa- helped facilitate this a bit. But you want to win more. You want to be remembered. That takes some... Yeah, that takes a little bit of some wherewithal to be able to do that because there's blow up in his face. This is what he is going to be remembered. If yeah. he gets caned by the Cavaliers and LeBron this season and they never win a title, they're going, what were you doing? What For, were you doing? It's that, a, takes some, that takes some courage. Courage, it sounds like you would use a different word that maybe we can't use on I know, the radio. I was going to use it in Spanish, and I go, you still can't say it in Spanish. <laughs> and I know people do, but you're not supposed to because it's still a bad word. Gotcha. Well, I'll say this. It's the first time since 2008. This is how important Kyrie is how important Gordon Hayward has been, and maybe how unimportant or insignificant with regard to win total Isaiah Thomas was. For the first time since 2008, a LeBron James team in the Eastern Conference is not projected to have the highest win total. And that's according, obviously, to the folks out in Vegas. Cleveland's second, and it's close, but this year it's all in on Boston in the Eastern Conference. One more thing, speaking of LeBron, one more thing. Kyrie Irving asked about his now former teammate today at the introductory press conference. What's your relationship like with LeBron now, and have you spoken to him since this whole with asking for the trade? No, I haven't uh, spoken to him. And uh, my uh, intent, like I said, was uh, for my best intentions and to look back at the amount of ground we covered in the last three-year span, or even before that because we had a prior relationship, and um, to, to... to really realize how special that was and how much growth happened in that amount of time. I'd be sitting up here and telling you guys a lie if I didn't tell you I learned so much from that guy. I think that's fair. I think, Wait, he's, I think he said, I have, I have not talked to LeBron. Have not talked to LeBron right off the bat. You believe him? Whether I believe him or not, and if, if, if this happened with Durant and uh, Durant as well as Westbrook, and that is something that they, whether they didn't, they spoke and they didn't speak. That bothers me. If they want to keep that between themselves, I, I that's fine. But just say, yeah, I spoke to him, but that's not in your business. But there's something that's very odd there about these relationships that I don't talk about. This is a guy you've basically been your brother. He's been your, your everything, your partner and all this stuff. We saw that with Durant and Westbrook. They didn't talk. I go, I don't understand why you don't talk for two minutes, even if it's brief and if it's angry. You go, this is what I want. And they'll mm-hmm. understand. I don't understand not talking. And if you did talk, why are you telling us that we didn't talk? Both sides I don't agree with. Here's the thing. LeBron doesn't have his ring without Kyrie. But LeBron gets all the credit. So I understand Kyrie's desire to do this. I understand his desire to be the man. But at the same time, he knows full well hit the road to repeating that. Like, I think he's properly motivated. You mentioned how winning a title affords you that latitude to be able to explore your option join a team that you want to join. Well, now he knows he has to deliver on that. I think he's yep. properly motivated in Boston. Max Bredesen, Randy Scott on the Rosillo Show. When we come back, is this the worst the SEC's been in a long time? On ESPN Radio. This week, tune in to the Paul Feinbaum Show as I discuss... The delicious taste of ice cold, Dr. Pepper. Larry Culpepper? Hey, I'm in the middle of a promo. Sorry, Finey. The fans are craving so much Dr. Pepper, I thought I'd borrow some of your airtime. Security! Hey, look, whether you're watching college football or calling to some guy's radio show, Dr. Pepper makes college football that much sweeter. So grab some of your local store today. Can I have one of yours? Hey, we got a caller. You're on the Larry Culpepper Show with your host, Larry Culpepper. That's it. That's Dr. Pepper, the one fans crave. There's a lot of exciting stuff to look forward to. No question. Right? No question. I mean, I, listen, I'm not an Ohio State fan. I don't actively root against the Buckeyes, but last night was fun uh, to see them back on the field because it was a conference. You don't see a lot of conference play right off the bat, and that was really cool to see. All right, very cool. So uh, we there's a lot of things that have, are, are getting us excited about the college football season. And uh, coming into the opening week, the love for Alabama has been there paramount. As you're grinning at me. Because you don't believe in it. No, I do. I just... I, just, there is, The curtain's going to be pulled back by Nick Saban, and we're going to see some guys that are going to become first-round picks, first-round linebacker, first-round defensive line that we're going to get familiar with over the next few weeks. Uh, I, I know Rodney Harrison. That's Of the defensive guys, the guys that I know well for Alabama, it's Rodney Harrison's there, and there's a couple other guys that will feel... Everyone else is kind of an unknown quantity that we're going to get to know pretty intimately as the weeks ahead my 
I've never been. Look, I, I, I'm an ACC guy. I love the ACC. I love Florida State. I love to see the ACC do well. When the schools of the ACC aren't playing Florida State, I am pulling for them. It makes us all look good. <laughs> now, the SEC, I think I want Alabama to be pulled back a little bit. But I look at the rest of the conference, and I go, who's going to be doing the pulling? And there is a detachment, and it seems to be getting bigger every week. And got us to thinking, because of that reason, I want Alabama challenge. I want Alabama to have an SEC loss every year if possible. I think that's good for them. It's good for college football. But I see an Alabama team that's going to run through the SEC, quite frankly. I like Auburn a bit. The rest, and we, we spoke with Heather Dinich, these teams that currently in the polls reside 14 through 20, uh, LSU and Auburn and Florida, and they have their own issues, and Georgia. But who is going to be that team who reaches for Alabama and at least drags themselves up to the top? I don't think it's LSU. I want it to be LSU. I, I want it to be LSU, and I just can't. I, I, I really tried for it to be LSU, and I just couldn't put my stamp of approval on it. LSU will give you some of the best running you know, running back talent in the country year in and year out. But once again, quarterbacks. Are Danny questioning. Etling, are you excited about no, Danny Etling? No, no, me neither. And, o- and that Ojuan. feels like settling on something. We had Coach O on campus this summer. You know, for a guy who gets excited about so much so easily, even he didn't sound like Danny Etling was. You know, a world beater. I think it's more because Coach O spits the truth and speaks the truth, and that's how he connects with his roster. But we like Ogeron. We want it to be LSU. We want LSU to be something it's not. And that's on Alabama's level, right? We want a team on Alabama's level. We want it to be LSU because they played each other so tough year in and year out. And regardless who's coach, they're going to recruit lights out. They're in their backyard. They have five-star, four-star recruits at their beck and call. Yeah, yeah and, and Orgeron has, has done what he can so far to shut the borders off to outside invaders when it comes to recruiting. Shut the borders at, at, at uh, Louisiana. But, man, I listen, Max, I we, we look at these SEC. You can throw Vandy out. You can throw Kentucky Don't out. Don't do that. It's a wonderful no, university. You can. Oh, okay, okay. Missouri, can, Missouri gone. Missouri is a great quarterback. You can throw them out. Uh, Ole Miss out. Mississippi State out. Like you, right off the bat, you can eliminate nearly half the conference. And then you look at those that Alabama even plays, and the number gets smaller. I think it comes down to the Iron Bowl. I think Auburn is really the the true test beyond Florida State. The true test on Bama's on Bama's schedule. But I don't remember a time in recent memory where the SEC has been this top heavy. Alabama, world class. And then but the drop off happens. You say top heavy, but top heavy almost suggests there's three or four teams that are kind of carrying the, the flame. And remember, this was a conference that had its issues in bowl season. And the, the last two or three seasons, I've seen the shine come off a bit. It's not Alabama's fault. They are the gold standard. But these other schools have just missed their targets. Tennessee at the top of that list. And I think they're going to come off the boil again because the expectations are finally lowered for them after it appeared they might have that breakthrough last year. Georgia, I don't know. I don't know. And we, we talked before we hit the air about, okay, they got a, Nick Chubb, great running back. Seems like they've had a great running back for 15 years. And then what else? What else can get them over the hump? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I Trust me, SEC – the SEC, folks in the SEC country that listeners, I want the SEC to be good because it's good for college football to keep Alabama in check, but I see Alabama running rough shot. It's amazing to see the talent that gets generated every year, sent to the NFL by the SEC, and it's, it doesn't just come from Alabama. I mean, certainly Nick Saban has sent his share, but it, it comes from all over. It's just, it is such a grind. It is such a grind, and Alabama has been best at navigating it, best at, at positioning itself to get to the college football playoff. It, it, Alabama just doesn't have any holes, man. And I know we don't know the defense, like you say, but don't you trust Saban to not only recruit the right guys, but put him in, right, in the right spot? Do you, one thing that I see in college football that reminds me of what we see in college basketball, it's becoming more about the coaches. It used to be spread out a little bit more, but Nick Saban's kind of – these great coaches, they're not out there where you can fill in. If you need a job, there was an opening at LSU. Uh, and there was an opening at USC. These guys aren't out there where you can give a huge pay – uh, check and say, all right, take us to the levels of Alabama, Ohio State. Those guys are already out there, and I think they're causing the separation more than anything else. And I'm talking about Alabama, Ohio State, uh, Florida State, because Jimbo, Jimbo Fish has put his time in, and I put Michigan in there, a super coach that you figure is going to recruit year in, year out. And those guys, I think, and we may see it this year, will continue to separate them because they are they are recruiting at the highest level. Players want to play there. Players want to play for these coaches. I think in the same way they want to play for Coach Cal, Coach K. Uh, they want to go to those yeah, North, North Carolina. They want to go to those programs, Roy Williams. Yeah. And that is going to always give them that opportunity to get the best teams. I think based on the preseason polls, we're seeing that. I don't know. 
Okay, let me ask you this. We don't want to be slaves to the rankings here. We don't want to be, but, you know, be uh, trod to the preseason. But, okay, Penn State's at six. The next SEC team, I think, is Auburn at, at 12, or, or at LSU at 12, Auburn at 13, whichever way. Are you telling me, like, neutral site, just by that we go with Penn State? Like, probably not. No. Right? But that's just how it shakes out. It's coming off of last year, looking at the roster, all of it. But I still, like, there are still SEC teams that you if you see them on your schedule, it's going to throw throw a scare into you. And, and that's... You know, that's even, but not that's like even a Texas to. A&M. No, no not like it used to. I think Texas A&M is a perfect example. That's a team you see, and now you're like, right, we got these guys, and it's no. Florida with their issues. It's just so much, so much uncertainty in the SEC. Part of it with Alabama is Tennessee might not be ranked by the time they play. I have a little faith in them. I maybe, toward the end of October. Do you yeah, really? I, I, maybe I just know how he's been recruiting. Uh, uh, Five star hearts, Max. That's what he says. <laughs> Five star hearts. At some point, that's got to come to the surface, or maybe he, then he's not the right fit. But I think now the it seems less of the pressures on the pressure is definitely on him, but less of the pressure from the media is on it because they're not expected to win the East. They're not expected to be a top three, two, three, four team in yeah. the uh, SEC overall. And they're that caught in the up twenties somewhere. That caught up to him last year. You come in as a top ten team, stumble out of the gate. You got four losses by the end of it. A lot of schools, even in the SEC. Eight and four, nine and four. That's a successful year. Yeah. Vandy takes that in a heartbeat. Kentucky takes that in a heartbeat, but not at Tennessee. Not when you're measuring yourself against Alabama, however unrealistic that may be. I will say, don't sleep on Georgia. Is it, that who would you say? Who is that one? I hope it's Georgia. Georgia. I just I love everything about their program. I just it's just been frustrating to see them not get the ring. They believe, you know? they believe in Kirby. It's only his second year, and I and I will, you can, you got to give Kirby as far as some patience here. And this is a guy who seems to have all the intangibles to challenge the hierarchy. Yes. in the SEC, and they don't. Alabama and Georgia don't play each other in the regular season. Not to say they wouldn't play each other uh, in the SEC title game. Right, well, we'll see if we get. There. I hope I'm wrong, as I always like to say. <laughs> I hope I am wrong, but I fear I am right. SEC. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, we've been continuing here. There's a lot of great stuff we're going to get you. We've been waiting for it. It's almost here. Florida State-Alabama game is tomorrow night, 8 Eastern time on ABC. This weekend preview on the Ryan Rosillo Show is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 50% or more on car insurance. Visit us at geico.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. Coming up on the Rosillo Show, Ed Cunningham leaves broadcasting because of the dangers of football. Okay, Kevin, for the grand prize of $1 million, what color is the White House? Um, I know this, I know this, I know this, um... Five seconds. Oh, switching to GEICO could save you a bunch of money on car insurance? Okay. Judges? That's true, Kevin. Bill and Owen, congratulations. You're a winner. Woo! GEICO, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. What I enjoy about working with you is you give me the space and you allow me to to be to be me. Why would I why, why would I not allow the caged bird to sing? You know, like you gotta for my own for my own benefit. That's you gotta why. be you, man. Because I'm gonna get in trouble at some point. I'm gonna blame you. Well, because we broke in about well, not about the same time, but in the same shift. Everybody sort of broke yeah. in at night back in the day, and and yeah. you taught me Did some, certain some shows. things on the on the shows that don't even exist anymore. I would do things and go, don't do that. <laughs> do as I don't say, do not as I do. Stay away. <laughs> uh, well, again, a lot to talk about football uh, and. We're glad to get your feedback if you want. Reach out on Twitter, Instagram, you name it. We want to talk about the sport. Obviously, we're right in the middle of it. We had Ohio State play last night and uh, the big Florida State-Alabama game coming up tomorrow night. And I'll get the soccer talk. I know some people on Twitter. We're going to get that a little bit later in the show because it's always a big night for the United States as they qualify. World Cup hopes could be in the balance as they face Costa Rica in uh, Harrison, New Jersey. Just a, a short walk from Newark. Uh, I like that the stadium very much there. I wish I was there, but I'm here. Uh, a very serious uh, situation coming in with regards to football, college football, because of his connection to it. And that is Ed Cunningham, who is a, a high-ranking football analyst here, a, a guy who I really – that personally, I'm on a level for him walking away, it's disappointing because I really enjoyed listening to him uh, call football games. But he is walking away, uh, worried about brain trauma on the field, how it affects uh, the athletes and how – Many people in the football circles have looked away. He was a guest on Mike and Mike this morning, and he spelt out with much detail exactly what his, uh, uh, he is not agreeing with, uh, in specific here about some things he experienced watching the games. I had a lot of problems with a lot of coaches at the college level and their inability to sort of get out of old habits 
and continue to play injured players. We had in our bowl game, uh, we were doing Iowa, and C.J. Beathard, who had gone through a sports hernia that really debilitated him in 2015 when we covered him. And then last year, we're doing a bowl game, and they left C.J. Beathard in with a severely pulled muscle, and, and I believe it was up near his, his buttocks and his hamstring. He couldn't run. He couldn't throw. His throwing was off. And they were playing a superior opponent in Florida with better players on defense. And this kid took a pounding. That was sickening. I almost, during the broadcast, kind of just went off on a many rant on the whole thing. And that's not my job in that moment. I, I need to continue commenting that I felt like you needed to be out of the game. But, man, it was hard. I, I, I literally considered going down and confronting the coaches in their locker room after the game. That's how kind of angry I got. Uh, there's a lot of strong audio but from Ed Cunningham I'd like to get to, but I want to leave that here because I think that, to me, is the most important thing in the, the role of prevention. And he's talking about an, a, a muscular injury. It, it, I think at the crux of it, it's the CTE, it's the head trauma that is the biggest issue with regards to injuries, fo- by and large, maybe biggest issue, period, uh, in football, not just football sports, because this is a, a, a an issue that many sports have to look really closely to. But it's the prevention part that imagine that was a, a blow to the head. And we've seen it many times where you have to go through the right protocol. And I think the, the guys are getting it, coaches. But that has to be 100%. That has to be, you always have to err on the side of caution at this point. None of this rah, 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 okay, he, we're football players, we're tough, we can yeah, get out there. Yeah. And I'm not saying, look, I think there may be a better way for Ed Cunningham, maybe there is a better way for him to kind of address this and stay in football and do it as opposed to walk away and say, that's it, I'm done with it. But I think with this complaint, uh, there is a, a, a major issue, and I we want to see improvement on that. I'm going to miss Ed in this game, like yeah. uh, calling these games, around these games. Around... He's a smart guy, too, and you know that he could maybe help fix these things if he th- these kind of voices are there. Well, and he says he thought yeah. about going down and confronting. Basically, it, listen, it's the I. He doesn't name names, but it's the Iowa it's coaching staff. Yeah. So that's Kirk Ferentz and company. And he thought about going down there and confronting him. Ed's 48, looks 38 probably has a mindset and physicality of a 28-year-old, and he's going at a 62-year-old Ferentz. My money's on Ed in that instance. Um, but we're going to miss him uh, around here, and he was frank and he was open. And listening to that interview on Mike and Mike, we know where Mike Golick comes from with regard to to a lot of the player safety. Uh, he's made his positions clear on, on head injuries and proper tackling techniques. And I think that's where he and Ed have more in common maybe than they realize. Because in that interview, Ed said, you know, he's involved in TV production, instructional video production, um, away from ESPN, and now he has more time to yep. devote to that. So I think he's going to make an impact there. So I, that's where I kind of draw a distinction between, hey, listen, you know, you had this platform, you had this microphone every Sunday, m- million people watching your game. You really want to get on your soapbox about yeah. this. You could have done it then. But he also touched on the fact that if somebody else wants to do this job, this job of being a color commentator, he didn't want to stand in their way. And if he started to do what his conscience was drawing him, was calling for him to do, then he wasn't doing his job as color commentator, and someone else who wanted it, someone else who deserved it, you know, should have taken his spot, and that's what he's stepping away. And he addressed why he couldn't be a color analyst anymore. Unlike your your guy's job, where you sit and you get to comment on things about the suspension, I had a job that was, by definition, a cheerleader for the sport. When you are the color analyst, your job, from the beginning of time, is to uh, push the, the agenda of the sport, push the agenda of the moment, the agenda of the game, and I'm not, I'm not saying I, I, I don't think that's the right role and that's not what that guy should do. I just could no longer do it for this sport. I think there's some wiggle room, and I think our, our industry is changing very quickly where you can reinvent that position if Ed Cunningham wanted to. You could be the rah-rah guy in the sport, but you could be deathly serious about these topics if you want to when you pick – those spots but i mean that that's up to him and he could do it i just i think we miss him because you said is your soapbox this is an opportunity to say you can't hit that way if you get hit in the head from behind the guy's gone whatever it is you can right. say those things to kind of get into the bloodstream a little bit he makes the distinction about and it was golic as a matter of fact who said hey are you walking away from football altogether is this a breakup from the sport and he said no 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 I, I learned a lot from it. I still think there's a lot to be gained from a lot of benefit at the youth level, high school level, at the college level as well. And and then he basically drew a line at the NFL and said, those are professionals. They know what they're getting into. That's their own thing. They should, you know, that's that's a different beast. He's talking about college kids who are not being protected by their coaching staff. And, 
you know, you look at the All-22, he mentions the, the amount of tape that he would view, the amount of video, and there are collisions away from the ball that we don't see on every play. We're drawn to the ones by the football, the ball carrier, the receiver, the quarterback, but there are countless others happening each time, and he just felt like he couldn't support that anymore at okay. that level specifically. Uh, he had a lot of great things to say, but maybe we'll give our final thought here about what, what's going on. What's going on in the bigger picture of football? And we, we certainly support Ed Cunningham and his moves. I, I think the this is a real important time for football to look at the product and see realistically. And, you know, you're going to hurt some feelings about what you need to do to get through to these coaches. Today. I think, you know, working on technique. I've always said, I know this is completely absurd if you'd heard it for the first time. You play without helmets one day, and that's something where you could probably do. But I, I think this is a time when you get this snowball effect you, you you make you make these tough decisions. Yep. I have a little announcement, an Instagram announcement. Oh. That starting the NFL season on Fridays on my Instagram feed, Embredos, the much loved, certainly by Ryan, David Bowie. You like it too? And by me, yeah. David Bowie will be making my David Bowie impression. We'll be making NFL picks every Friday. Uh, you'll get a little taste of what what people are enjoying. I hope. And if it doesn't work three weeks, I'll change it. To Mick Jagger or someone else, but you know, jump on there and we'll be able to do that. It should be a lot of fun. So what do you, well, I mean, the first game is on a Thursday, so is that going to be like so a, I'll probably skip that. I'll probably go thing? Sunday and maybe the Monday night football game. You're going to skip Tom Brady? Yes. No, David Bowie wouldn't do that. No, i, I got to go right to the Saints and the Vikings and give you my pick. <laughs> Have you good. ever seen a Viking up close? No, They're no. They're terrifying. No. Something to that effect. Good. They're okay. terrifying. Because David Bowie has I know. seen. Yes. I, 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 my full support's for the Saints, but the Vikings are going to win. Yes. Week one. All right. All right. Okay. More pressing here. I am. Uh, I did something very interesting yesterday. I went to Dick's Sporting Goods to buy some sporting goods. Of, that it seems like the right place to do it. Right. So one of those things was a mouthpiece, a mouth guard, Ugh. Uh, sh- uh, socks, and a, a new pair of rugby shorts because I'm two weeks out from the Aspen Rugger Fest. I'm doing my Colorado trip, going to Aspen to play two games of rugby, 8,000 feet in the yeah, in the sky, by the way. Where the beer flows like wine. Yeah, and then I'm going to the Telluride Blues and Brews Music Festival. So I'm doing Aspen Telluride. I'm really excited, taking the whole family. It's going to be uh, one of those things we're going to be better off on the other end. But I'm trying to stay in shape. I haven't played rugby in seven, eight years. I play on the beach sometimes when I'm out in California. We throw the ball around. It's a good workout. I, I, fitness-wise, I'm doing all of my power to get that up, and I think I'm good. But I haven't tackled anyone. I haven't been tackled in a while, and... That leaves me a little concerned. Well, you're, but and this is two weeks. I'll be taking the field on that. The position you play, though, you don't really tackle, right? Like you're not really. No, no, you do. I mean, I may, I might just push someone into someone else for them to tackle. I'm going to try and take the high ground is a this, little bit. Is this like an anchorman fight, like where there's no, no, no but, there's no touching of the face? Like they understand no, no. what's at stake here. This is what's going to be. So I just turned 45 recently. I know I look like that's, I'm 28. That's amazing. I know. Shocker. It's amazing. So there's a 45 and over. We also have a 50 and over team. We're the Santa Monica Rugby Club. We're going to go there. So it's guys I used to play with 45, 46, 47, 48. So what you would imagine most guys aren't really in tip-top shape, and they're going to take some short corners, especially <laughs> when you're at that altitude. The games are shorter. There's liberal substitutions, so no one's going to die out there Good. on exhaustion. But my concern is that maybe a 35-year-old guy slips in there, or we're dealing with one of these CrossFit guys who's 45, and I have to tackle him. And he's going 100 miles an hour. CrossFit guys, you can never trust. I go, but, what are you doing, dude? Yeah. Go to the 50 and over. <laughs> right. Or go to the 35s. <laughs> so what? Like, what's the bruising situation at altitude? Like, I know if you drink at altitude, it hits you harder. It, I know that from personal experience. But if you're at altitude, do you also bruise like a peach? I don't know. I'm gonna find, I, I, generally, when I've been at altitude, I'm not doing any exercise. That's been a rule of thumb of mine for many years. Fact. I'm a sea level exerciser. <laughs> <laughs> on the beach in Santa Monica, the old sand anywhere workout. where the air is thick, I will take it all in. What's the shirt policy? Like, do you, are you the guy that are, are you first to take your 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 uniform off? You're like, asking some interesting interesting questions there. What's the short situation with the rugby? Shorts you want to make them short so they don't have a big target to tackle. You, there you, you slide go. off the tackles. Nice, and you just muck it up as much as you can. So two weeks. I actually gonna. I, the old mouthpiece where you have to meld into your mouth. I hate those. Well, I have to do that. I'll be doing that tonight. It's the worst. You burn the roof of your mouth because yeah. you're supposed to do it while it's hot. And I just think of these old plastic ones that used for three bucks. Now they're 25 bucks. 
Ew. And I, my my wife was saying, get the better one. They're your teeth for crying out loud, and they have a cherry vanilla taste in them. Oh, that's good. Or you can buy different flavors. Uh, you won't get tired of that at all. See, I never bought a mouthpiece in years, so this is something new. So, uh, <laughs> kids, you have it really good. Back in, we had a piece of plastic we just shoved in there, and you basically you bought like eight of them, and you'd use one every two games and throw it away. Who's covering? Like, is anybody covering this? Maybe no, not for me. No, no, no. This. Is your wife? Oh, yeah. Hold on now. Somebody's got to get video of this so that I'll, this can air. We'll probably do a little bit of that but somewhere. It's, the team in Aspen's very good. They're very well regarded. They have a great home field advantage, for crying out loud. Yeah, they're an out, they have their altitude legs. So, yeah, uh, I, I, as we get closer, I'm going to get a little bit worried. I'll keep, I'll, I'll keep you guys uh, up to speed, <laughs> and maybe that someone can talk me out of it. But I'm excited. I've been running, uh, getting after it. Maybe I'll swim a little bit. Have you been lifting at all? You've been working yes, on cardio. Bit, like, you need a shell, you know? Some light lifting along the way. Nothing too heavy because at this point. You've got to be able to stay fleet afoot. Correct. Okay. Where we, you may not be worried. Now two weeks out, we are worried for you. Okay, I'm worried. I'm worried like Ryan, too. Ryan was very concerned when you brought. I was listening to the show when it was you and Ryan, and Ryan brought it up, or you brought it up, and Ryan was like, "This is not a good idea." No, this is poorly that thought ship, out. That ship has sailed. All, All right, right, so wish me luck. Uh, if you want to be down in Aspen, uh, September 14th, 15th, come out, film, and no. provide it there. But you'd be welcome. I'll buy you a coffee. Everybody wants to be in Aspen. It's just getting there to see this. There's a lot of good music coming out. Yeah. I just want to give a few tips of what I, I download music at a, at a rapid pace. Uh, the new um, album by Queens of the Stone Age, another new album by uh, Grizzly Bear. I really enjoy uh, some really good music coming out. Uh, Brockhampton, excellent. That sure. just came out. So I, I go off the the beaten path a bit. But Taylor Swift had a new album, and this is creating all the stir. Yeah, the album's right? coming out in November. You're really excited for this release. I was excited for this song. I was excited because it's what. <laughs> Because it kind of came this out. Is it? Yeah. I'm sure I'll hear it ad at, at nauseum on every radio station. Every outlet will have it. Well, so I didn't like, and this isn't just a company shill job here, but like I didn't love it when I heard it. And it was all over Twitter. And I was like, oh, I kind of forgot that it was coming out. But then I saw that ESPN had put it with a college football promo. Smart. And they sort of spliced Smart. it together like a sizzle reel. And I was like, okay. And I said, Saruti, what? And Smalls, I said this to you too. What, like, as, the day it came out, and I said, I hate myself already because I don't like it. But in two weeks, I'm going to talk myself into it, and now I'm just bopping along to it. And here we are. Comes are, are on you the radio, guys? and yeah. I can't hear you, Saruti. I said, here we are, two weeks later, and every time it comes on the radio, I don't change it. You don't change You like it? And I hate myself for Michelle, it. Michelle? Yes, and I hate myself, too. It's a terrible song. But? I change it every time. You still right. change it. I'm going to download it. it. You're staying true to it. Basically, her... Music. I, I listen because I listen to all the music on my, on my the, the download music I have, but I'll download yeah. it because I think it's important we all listen to this because you'll feel like a fool. I go, have you heard the new Taylor Swift song that's been played everywhere? And I go, no, right. I haven't. Like her her music. I don't want to say is all this her the music song here. Yeah, but this song is like this. This is French fries. It, there's no substance. Is that the name of it? French it's, fries. There's no that's substance. A terrible name. No, it, like it, hear me out. No substance. Uh, it's bad for you, and you, f you. But you can't stop eating it. And you feel worse about yourself after the fact. That's the genius. That's what it is. But that's the genius of it. That's why she is the biggest, one of the two yeah. or three biggest recording artists. And she's got some beef with Katy Perry here. And here's my theory By on the way, that. this is what you just said about Kay, uh, Taylor Swift. I used to say that about Dawkins back in the day. About Dawkins. Uh, Katy Perry's having trouble selling out arenas. Like selling out her tour. She got a tour. She's she doing might the mega arenas, to correct? Cancel. Yeah, she might have to cancel some of her dates or switch to a smaller venue. Taylor Swift doesn't have that problem. Hey, Toad's Place in New Haven's available if you need a quick show. <laughs> Katy Perry to get you from New York to Boston. New Haven's where it's at for the music yep. scene. This is what we talk about when we're efforting Adam Schefter on the program. I'd also like to say my guy Action Bronson, who's a big soccer fan, has a new album out, too, that I enjoy. But we can't play it for our college football. You got? No? Okay, good. <laughs> Bam Bam Baklava, as he likes to be called now, Action Bronson. Very good. But again, not safe for work. This all sounds made up. This is These true. These sound like fake things. Oh, yeah. But, but Okay. Downloading music machine, but it's a lot of alt rock, and I, I like to listen to some heavy rock. But the kids are kind of, you know, these kids that with that are doing science experiments that look like that, like the Revenge of the Nerds kids. They're yeah. now the musicians. You're going to fit right in in Colorado, man. You are the NFL. By the way, before the NFL preseason finale, <laughs> we're just looking at some of these games oh, empty. Man. It's just I, I understand those guys trying to make those last few spots. I imagine most of those guys are. If you talk about getting rid of the preseason, maybe that last preseason game is the first thing to go. Well, I don't know. I got you. All right. ESPN Radio presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Ryan Rosillo Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Joining us now is Adam Schefter on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Pennzoil Synthetics, taking synthetic motor oil performance to a whole new level. Make the switch to Pennzoil Synthetics.
today. And Adam, if you could get us up to speed on the uh, what is the latest you hear about the Ezekiel Elliott situation? We are waiting for a ruling from the arbitrator, Harold Henderson, in this particular case, waiting to see what he decides he wants to do with the suspension, whether he wants to overturn it, reduce it, or keep it intact. We are waiting to hear from the court system in Dallas whether they will grant a temporary restraining order in this particular case. So there are two big decisions that have to be made. I would think that we could know any time between now and Tuesday, and we will get further clarity once each of those entities weighs in with its own thought process. One could wipe out and nullify the other, but again, we're waiting on it right now. Everybody wants to know, is Zeke Elliott playing next Sunday? Should I draft him on my fantasy team? We don't know. We don't know because right now it's uncertain about whether he's going to be playing next Sunday against the Giants, whether he's going to be serving six games, four games, two games, no games. Don't know. All in question right now in regards to what has become a rather controversial case where the NFL obviously is responding to the NFLPA's claim. The NFLPA claimed that the NFL did not handle this case properly, that basically – it drew its own conclusion. It didn't have enough evidence. And the NFL says that Roger Goodell gets to do what he wants under the powers of the CBA, and it baits its decision off the forensic evidence evidence in this particular case. Uh, Adam Schefter here, NFL Insider. Adam, Kia Roberts, Lisa Friel. Why is the average football fan getting to know those two names? Um, and, uh, okay, um, because those are the two names that are involved here. Kia Roberts was the one woman that met with Tiffany Richardson. Guys, um, let me do you a favor. Let me let me call you back here at about 3 o'clock, if you don't mind. Not a problem. No, not at all, Adam. Thanks, Adam. Listen, when Adam Schefter sounds uh, <laughs> like things are happening, then things, things are, are things happening. Things are brewing, yeah. You, you know what I mean? And I'll, so here, stick with us. We'll find out the details on that. Well, here I appreciate him, him squeezing us in when he could. Uh, the Kia Roberts, Kia Roberts, lead investigator on this Ezekiel Elliott domestic violence situation, the accusation that he abused his former girlfriend, Tiffany Thompson. Kia Roberts reports to Lisa Friel, who then reports to Roger Goodell. Kia Roberts, her recommendation based on her investigation, her interviews, going over the evidence to which she, she had access, was no suspension. She recommended no suspension. Lisa Friel took that, gave it to Roger Goodell, and Goodell came up with six games. That's one of the key problems that the NFLPA has with the severity of the suspension handed down by the NFL commissioner. Yeah, look, the man, the man, he's the man at the top, and he rules, and he makes the verdicts, and he may have a very good reason uh, the way he feels that way. But when you have that uh, it's paper trail, mm-hmm. uh, I, it, the NFLPA certainly has uh, a, a, a big stance here to, to fight for their client, by all means. And, I, and when we get out of it, I'd like to hear about the reaction from the NFL, people timing in about this, because there's got to be a lot of frustration uh, with regards to NFL seasons starting this way. This is the reality the last three years that we have to start with a major decision made by the commissioner that, by and large, most people are not agreeing with. It's on the NFL, though. Like that's, that's, and doubt. that's what's so frustrating as an NFL fan. I don't, I don't care about the Cowboys. I don't care about Zeke Elliott. Outside of fantasy football purposes, the man's not going to impact my life. You know what I mean? Not going to yeah. impact how I watch football, how I view That's football. That's cold-blooded right there. Until, well, <laughs> until this. until the, This has been out there, Max, for more than a year. It's been investigated for more than a year. So the fact that it suddenly runs into right up against the start of the season and is such a distraction and such a cloud... That's on the NFL for taking so long with its investigation, for taking so long in the process, and then for laying down the suspension that it did without heeding the advice of the lead investigator. And the egg on the face of the NFL will be there if this is overturned or it is lessened to a degree where it feels like Ezekiel is getting a, an agreeable situation closer to where he wants. I think we have a Darren Woodson soundbite here where All he right. talks, and this is a cowboy this was now, early, this was, and he talks about Zeke. Okay, here's the Darren Woodson from earlier today. There's just been so much smoke, whether it be that incident with a young lady or the club fights or the lifting of the shirt of a young lady. There's been so many incidents with Ezekiel Elliott that at some point you got to take the gloves off and you have to punish where punishment is, is due. And I think it's due in this case. I'm saying this because you know how much I love this team. It's my family. But at the same time, at some point, something has to give. And I think they, the lesson needs to come down the pipe hard and strong. And that that was maybe from a couple days ago, and that may be the right way to handle it, and that will send the message loud and clear. But and there has been some smoke around Ezekiel Elliott that has been caught on video, 
uh, in, in the past, but I find it hard to punish him on something that has been ruled out in certain circles. I you, just do. You have to punish him based on what you can prove. What you can prove. Un- unfortunately, and and he, it, the, where this is going to have a real lasting impact and an unfortunate impact, if they keep getting domestic violence wrong, is it's going to prevent people who are abused from coming forward within the NFL. If you've been abused by an NFL player, what confidence do you have that it's going to be handled correctly right now? This week, tune in to the Paul Feinbaum Show as I discuss... The delicious taste of ice cold, Dr. Pepper! Larry Culpepper? Hey, I'm in the middle of a promo! Sorry, Finey. The fans are craving so much Dr. Pepper, I thought I'd borrow some of your airtime. Security! Hey, look, whether you're watching college football or calling or some guy's radio show, Dr. Pepper makes college football that much sweeter. So grab some of your local store today. Can I have one of yours? Hey, we got a caller. You're on the Larry Culpepper Show with your host, Larry Culpepper. That's it! That's Dr. Pepper, the one fans crave! Ohio State were working out a few, you know, kinks there. They were trying to get it, the team running uh, in the right direction, and then the depth of it really shone through. And as, as Dave Fleming called it, he goes, the third string Ohio State defense, which is freshmen, uh, red shirt freshmen, sophomores that are going to be first teamers, just overwhelmed Indiana. And that's what these that's where these big bad football programs, Ohio State, Alabama, Florida State, Michigan. USC are going to separate themselves because the athletes are so much better. I, I yeah. see it more with Ohio State than it. And Ohio State and Alabama at another level. It's just you look at it, the size, the strength, the speed pops off the screen. And, again, the, the Ohio State team is one that I think just is going to have the staying power because there's so much depth. Even a bad day, opening day, on the road, which it didn't sound like at the end it was all, all Ohio State fans. Those That's people, all you could hear. Those people are everywhere. Everywhere. Ohio State fans are. That's what happens when you have. How many people on campus this year at Ohio State, Michelle? 70,000? It's like 80,000 people on campus. It's, it's huge. It's the hey, biggest, what are, what's the biggest guy, campus. What's the guy who dresses like the. He paints his face red. Bald yeah, I guy, need you to be more specific. Guy. But yeah, I He's know like what you're talking about. He's like their number one fan. He's always yeah. there. Yeah. And they show him a lot. And I'm sure because. Uh, oh, Camera loves if him. If you're not an Ohio State fan, you will dislike Ohio State because they're a bully in college football. <laughs> and then you see that guy, you're like, oh, jeez. That's at M. Bredos, ESPN, for all Ohio State fans who want to jump in, weigh in. I respect with Max. him. He's at the games all the time. Oh, I even, know. Uh, even the road games. No, no, no. It wasn't I'm just him. saying, I think, speaking on behalf of the viewing public, <laughs> they go there. And, oh, hey, can't, hey. can't help it. The camera loves him. Hey, I'm um, going to say, the guys who have all the, twi- the, all the glitter, they hate those guys, too. I think your fans are usually known for something else down there at Tallahassee. It's usually... The camera seems, seems to find a different subset of fan, we'll say, at some of these at some of these football <laughs> games down you. in Tallahassee. So that's what we saw last night. Let's get to Max. Two things we think will happen in this college football season, not just with regard to Ohio State, and two things we think won't happen. Where do you want to Where do you want to start? I'll start because mine kind of blend in together. So I'm going to do one strong thing that's going to happen, one strong thing that will not happen, Ooh. one strong thing that will happen is Alabama will run the table in the SEC. Uh, maybe they lose to Florida. I think they'll beat Florida State, but they will run the, the table in the SEC. I'm just disappointed that we haven't seen a clear-cut uh, power in that conference move up to that line where Alabama's at. So we, I think they've taken a step back. I want to believe in Georgia. I want to believe in LSU. I, I, I enjoy Auburn, but I think their gap is was so far back last season that they might be the team to close it. They get Alabama at the end. I think it's good for college football that the SEC keeps Alabama at bay, but for the last few years they have not, and I think that will continue this year. All right, I'll dovetail off of that, and I'll say Jalen Hurts wins the Heisman Trophy. That's one thing I think will happen this year. SEC Offensive Player of the Year. He's going to put up a lot of numbers. He's coming back. He's going to get a lot of snaps, too. They're, they're going to go unbeaten. You know what I mean? Like Win-loss record for a quarterback is a bit of an overstated statistic, but I feel like it's tough to argue with the team. It's going to be 12-0, 13-0 um, by the time they, they cast the Well, 12-0 by the time they cast those votes. So that's one thing I think will happen. I'll go into the one thing that will not happen. And to me, and I disagree with Heather Dinich, who was on the show earlier, I don't think the ACC gets a team into the playoff. So that's one thing that won't happen. Okay. What, what, I disagree. Well, I think two ACC teams make it. So does Heather. No, Heather I agrees think, with you. I only think one. I only think one. All right, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Yeah, put a pin in the college okay. football. Let's go back out to the Shell Penzo performance line. Welcome back, uh, Adam Schefter, who's back with us. Adam, thanks, man. Th- I, know, I know you're busy. I know it's a busy day, a newsy day uh, in the NFL. Anything uh, that we should know uh, that transpired between the last time we just spoke? Uh, yeah, the New York Jets have traded Sheldon Richardson to Seattle for Jermaine Curse and draft pick considerations. 
Wow. Okay. So the wide receiver need has been somewhat addressed there and for uh, New York. For for New York, not that they don't have other needs. And Sheldon Richardson, someone to throw it to the the receiver, heading out to Seattle. Adam, that that feels that feels impactful on that defensive line as well. Yeah. No. Listen, Seattle has uh, 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 basically been making moves here, um, and this was the latest. Uh, Move right now. There's a lot of stuff going on, guys. So, <laughs> we get to... um, yeah, I listen. Seattle been talking about Sheldon Richardson for a few weeks now. They've been trying to deal Jermaine Curse. Jets need a wide receiver. Seattle want another defensive line. I mean, you think about Michael Bennett, Sheldon Richardson, Cliff Averill. That's a scary defensive line in Seattle. It sure is to go with already well, uh, well known, highly regarded defensive secondaries. We're talking to Adam Schefter, our ESPN. NFL insider on the Ryan Rosillo show. Hey, just a follow up with Ezekiel Elliott, uh, Adam. What are you hearing from the uh, from different NFL teams, from folks in the know that are watching this from the outside, looking in on how the NFL and how everything's been playing out? Say that one more time. I'm sorry. Uh, people outside, not connected to the Cowboys, that are within the NFL. How are they viewing the whole Ezekiel Elliott situation on how the NFL's been handling it? I listen. Everybody's waiting to see uh, how this comes out and everybody's waiting for Harold Henderson's decision. I, you know, everybody wants basically the league to do the right thing. And the leagues want to take a harder stance on domestic violence. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, there are questions about how the NFL hand the procedures involved. That's what the NFL PA is questioning. Everybody's waiting to see like everybody else. Like what does Harold Henderson decide? What courts decide? Is Ezekiel Elliott playing the season? There are a lot of questions that still have to be answered. Right now. Talking with Adam Schefter, he has been NFL Insider on uh, the Ryan Rosillo Show. Adam, we're already starting to see the cuts. I know the deadline is Saturday, 4 p.m., get down to 53 uh, men on the roster. We're already seeing cuts. What big names can you tell us about might be on the move? Well, listen, we, we, we've just seen a huge trade right there. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, Sheldon Richardson for Jermaine Curse and draft picks. Chris Johnson got released in Arizona today. The Broncos traded offensive lineman Tyson Bryo, former second-round draft pick to Atlanta, for a fifth-round pick. We see that the Arizona Cardinals went ahead and traded their backup offensive lineman, uh, Tony Bergstrom, to Baltimore for a conditional seventh-round pick. The Ravens released Dad Lewis and Larry Donnell and Jeremy Zuda. The moves are going to be coming all weekend, guys. Like We've got 1,184 moves that are going to be made. It's just literally starting over the last few hours, and it's going to keep going till four o'clock Eastern tomorrow. The starting quarterback situations are, are gelling up. What, what can we do? What can we discuss about firming up? We know that's going to be the case, certainly with the Cleveland Browns, but with the other quarterback battles out there, how close are we to closure? I'm sorry, you have to repeat that one more time. Uh, how close are we to closure? Certainly, the Texans they, they lock it down their quarterback situation. How close are we to having a starting quarterback for all thirty-two yeah. teams mentioned? I, I think we have them. We we have them. I think Tom Savage is expected to start the season in Houston. We have Mike Glennon expected to start the season in Chicago. We have Trevor Simeon in Denver. We have Josh McCown in New York. We have Blake Bortles in Jacksonville. We have Deshaun Kaiser in Cleveland. There's questions about Andrew Luck in Indianapolis. I don't think anybody expects that he's going to be playing week one. Right now against the Rams, Scott Tolzien would step in and start. There really aren't any quarterback questions left right now. Now the question becomes, when does Mitchell Trubisky come in and relieve Mike Glennon? You know, from Chicago standpoint, they're hoping that he plays well and that Glennon plays all season long. So there's, there's a lot of questions and issues right now out there in terms of the future. But in terms of opening day starting quarterbacks, there really aren't any more questions. All right, Adam Schefter, our ESPN NFL insider. Thank you, sir. Uh, enjoy the weekend. I know it's going to be a, a busy one for you. Thank you guys for having me. Sorry for all the call waitings. and <laughs> You're the man, Adam. Not a, man. It's Not a problem. It's a little bit hectic right now. We understand. We understand. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. All right, the Ryan Rosillo Show reminding you that you can listen to all three hours of the show on your phone on your ESPN app. We'll get back to college football when we come back. Peter Burns of the SEC Network going to join us to defend the honor the integrity of a conference both Max and I feel like uh, is on the downturn Nothing this personal. season, Alabama aside. It's Max Bredos, Randy Scott with you. The Ryan Rosillo Show on ESPN Radio. Okay, keep your eyes closed. Okay. I want to show you my first ever painting. Mm, all right. Okay. Open your eyes. Oh, that's a lot of colors mm-hmm. <laughs> and shapes. So be honest. What do you think? Well, uh, I like how 
If you switch to Geico, you could save hundreds of dollars on car insurance. Oh yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, here. Why don't I hold your paintbrush while you call them? Geico, because saving fifteen percent or more on car insurance is always a great answer. We found out in the break, um, either the control room or the studio or both are haunted. I am absolutely terrified right now. What, what did was you that? hear? I heard. I heard it, we heard in our audio. It sounded like this. Hello. That's that's yeah. exactly what it sounded, right? I heard hello from a voice that hasn't been living in a quite some time. A distressed voice. Yes. Like, not like a recognizable voice. Rudy, back, like... And no you, lie, no one knows where it came from. No one. And the board You guys heard it, too, and that's kind of what it sounded... Hello! The board didn't light up. There was no visual indicator that it was coming through any of the boards. No, and we asked our TV crew, hey, was that... You guys just sing song, a raspy hello to us, and they said it wasn't them. Can Doug Brown hear us? Doug, was that... Doug, was that you messing with us? Sports Center update. Doug, was that you messing with us? <laughs> You'll never admit. There's no, a voice. He there was his no. voice that came through that we, yeah. no one can find out where it came. We heard a voice. Okay, we heard a voice. Was so now, now we think the studio is haunted. It wasn't Doug. This is okay. We'll figure this out. We're being messed. I feel like we're being hazed. At no, the no, that felt that felt that was odd. But let's get the show back Very on the pointed. rails. Let's get the show back on the rails. Go out to the Shell Pennzoil performance line. Do we have do we have Peter with us? Peter Burns joining us here on the Rosillo show on ESPN Radio from the SEC network from previously Colorado where yeah. Max is headed Maybe out get to get a point or two. Bruise his body at the Aspen Rugger Fest. Uh Peter, we Max and I feel as though the SEC take Alabama away. The SEC is as vulnerable as it's been in a long time. Are we right or are we wrong? Well, as a proud member of the SEC network, gentlemen, I would tell you that's outlandish. But uh, as a sports fan, i got to be honest with you. I mean, that's exactly what we're saying right now, boys. I mean, yeah. listen, it has been Alabama in a bunch of also ran as of last year. Everybody kind of beat themselves up. I mean, what, no team won more than eight games? I mean, frankly, it was, it was embarrassing. And, and we go back and look at it this year. And I'm, I, I got to be honest with you, I'm frightened for what we may see in opening weekend. I think the matchups are just uh, hellaciously bad for the SEC. I mean, you look at Florida, who, my goodness, Max and Randy, if you guys, Randy, I'd put you as a wide receiver, Max, probably more of like a, like a, maybe a, maybe a nimble defensive lineman guy, like an outside edge. <laughs> I'll take it. Jim, Jim, Jim McElwain may need you right now uh, and see if you got any, any uh, eligibility left because this is nuts with their matchup against Michigan, uh, I, I, really one of the games that I was really looking forward to. And then now, you know, you lose 10 players coming into that game. Um, that, that's a brutal matchup, even though Harbaugh's squad is young. And honestly, this is a nightmare matchup, I think, for Alabama going up against Florida State. you got DeAndre Francois, um, who's nimble. He can move around. And you've got a really young Alabama defense. I mean, you, you know, listen, it's every year, guys, we talk about wash, rinse, repeat, right, where you could just – Hey, they're getting, it's like playing NCAA football on PlayStation. Like you had a five-star recruit, the next five-star guy is up, right? Well, sooner or later, that's got to catch up with you, and they're going to meet Jimbo Fisher, and uh, that, that, that's an offense that can move, move, move the ball pretty well. Peter, I, I love the SEC Network. I watched you guys last night. I did watch some Arkansas, Florida, and m That may be I, – I, I could not take <laughs> – enough college football at this point you first class effort for the sec network but i believe you guys need a better conference right now to back up that first class production you guys do and i hope it comes that way and as dire as you made it may sound in the first weekend is there what is everyone saying there in the building about a team that could rise up and smack alabama if they get that chance yeah, I mean, honestly, you know, I mean, the, the first thing goes to Auburn. Auburn's defense looked a whole lot better with Kevin Steele taking over the D, the as a D coordinator last year. Um, and I, and I think with Jared Stidham, remember the hype about Jeremy Johnson two years ago? They a lot of people have said, well, hold on, this is the same hype machine. Well, it's different. It's a whole lot different. Jared Stidham, I think, is ready. Everybody I've talked to down at Auburn says this kid, when he showed up, he was ready for that spotlight. Where I think that spotlight, guys, was a thrust upon Jeremy Johnson. I don't know if he felt comfortable in that position. And then there was Chip Lindsay, the offensive coordinator. I think Gus Malzahn has to honestly stay the hell out of the kitchen, has to say, you know what, this is his offense. I'm going to let him run it. And if that's the case, yeah, I mean, Alabama is going to be vulnerable. And the other thing is, too, I have no idea what Matt Canada is going to bring to LSU football. 
I, I assume it is going to be astronomical. Like, we're going to be, like, you know, you know, like in Cousin Eddie, like, I wouldn't have been more surprised if I would have woke up with my head sewn on the carpet when Cousin Eddie shows up in Lampoon's vacation. Like, yeah. I, I, I think that's going to be the offense that LSU is going to run, and we're going to look at each other and think, where, where is this LSU offense or this, you know, idea of putting these five-star athletes in space? Where, where in the world has this been for the last eight years? Because this, this is a difference maker. All right, talking with Peter Burns of the SEC Network with us here on the uh, Ryan Rosillo Show. Peter, I'm looking at two sort of, uh, I don't know, South Carolina, Will Muschamp, not a lot of people expect a ton not from them this year, it. but you got South Carolina mm-hmm. opening with an NC State team a lot of people like, and you got Tennessee opening up against Georgia Tech. Of those two, which SEC team is most vulnerable? Uh, I, I mean, I definitely would put South Carolina, and, and I love this kid, Jake Bentley. I mean, I, I was down in Columbia earlier this spring and sat with him, and his dad is the running backs coach, Bobby Bentley, over there. And I asked, I asked Bobby, I was like, well, when did you know he was going, that Jake Bentley, the quarterback at South Carolina, when did you know your son was going to be pretty special? And, guys, he said there was, I think, his seventh grade season, he never once got tackled, not once in the entire season. Whoa. Either he threw for a touchdown, ran for a touchdown, or ended up getting out of bounds the entire season. I'm like, how is this even possible? Um, so he's a good, good story. I think Will Muschamp's changed a lot. I think he he knows when to go to the whip, rather than just being kind of the the banshee that we saw him, you know, mm-hmm. over the last couple of years, where he's just he's so excited and he's so fired up. Uh, and I, I think. I think he is he's going to put himself in a better situation just NC State man is uh that defensive line is for real and I don't think that offensive line is going to be in, in very good shape for South Carolina coming up this year and I don't think that defense is going to be very good either but um I, I like Tennessee I wish we could ban all option teams from playing week one and week 14 <laughs> of the college football season because nobody Nobody likes I – mean, I hate fade routes. I hate cut blocking even worse. Yeah, yeah, nobody <laughs> likes it. Nobody. Yeah. Peter Burns of the SEC Network giving Marty Smith a run for best hair south of the Mason-Dixon line. Peter, <laughs> thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Martellus Bennett. Thank goodness. And Matthew Barry going back and forth on the old Twitter. It's interesting. Is it a, a, about Matthew Barry's new TV show? No. With the puppets? The highly rated uh, Matthew Barry TV program. Yeah. No, it's um, – it's, I guess Martellus Bennett said something like – no one care. It was just an unsolicited tweet, right? Here, let me make sure I get it right. But at Marty Source Rex, Marty's Marty Bennett's one of the best, like one of the most fun Twitter follows out there. Where is it now? He's talking about. I never cared about your fantasy football team. Ba, ba, ba. This is great yeah, it's radio right here. It's basically, like, I don't care about your fantasy football team. Signed, real football guy. Oh. And Matthew Berry's like, I get it, but there's a lot of money, a lot of attention being spent. And it helps fuel the popularity of your sport. Maybe you made have... a very nice living out of it. Well, which... but but I think a lot of people know who Martellus Bennett is. Like more people know about Martellus Bennett than would without fantasy football. Does that make sense? Yes. Right. Like casual fan, armchair fan, office fantasy league guy. Um, and Mar- it's, I, it's always the Bennett brothers. No, it's a kind well, of getting in on these things. And so Marty is not one to back down. So anyway, that's on Twitter. That's really interesting. There's another NFL story going on right now. A trade that Adam Schefter. Nearly broke on this program. We get the feeling he sort of stepped away from the show mid-interview so that he could get his feel for what this story was. But here's here's what it is. Jets sending Sheldon Richardson to the Seahawks. Seahawks sending Jermaine Curse to uh, the, the Jets. So the Jets' wide receiver issue is addressed somewhat. Somewhat. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> It's a dress resolved. This almost seems like the Jets going, all right, we're going 2 and 14. We're getting. They were so bad in the preseason. Uh, yes. I mean, you can't look at the preseason, but they were so bad, you have to take it as law, I think, with the Jets. Well, with the Jets, you Offensively, don't... it's like not good. With the Jets, you don't want to look at the preseason. No. Like, no. you can't, but you also it's don't that, want it was to. bad. Uh, so, sorry, we didn't. Max brought us Randy Scott with you on the Ryan Rosillo show, uh, filling in for Ryan. Uh, so, the, the Jets address one of their concerns. They don't fix it, but they address it. The Seahawks defensive line now. Say what you want about Sheldon Richardson. He's the guy who can't seem to drive the speed limit. He's but and he's in trouble off the field somewhat. Sometimes he goes after his teammates. That Snapchat uh, video about Brandon Marshall, uh, among other things. But he's a first round selection. Only four years. Twenty thirteen. No. He's only twenty six. He's a big dude. He's only twenty six, and he has sixty two combined tackles in twenty sixteen. Eighteen sacks over four seasons. He's still productive when he's on the field. And say what you want about the Seahawks defense. It's been one of the better ones. 
in the NFL in, in recent memory, but they do have trouble getting after the quarterback, and maybe that's something they address today. Look, this Seahawks team, I think the window's closing for them. I mean, these guys, a lot of these guys are going to come up for contract. They did a pretty good job getting those guys, but after you win a Super Bowl, everyone's going to going to have to be in the money. I think they hit all those right spots, but that process is going to start happening again, and I don't think they'll be able to spread it out as much this time if they go on a run. So this could be, and maybe next year, the window for the Seahawks. Obviously, Russell Wilson has a lot to give, and they have some young pieces, but this could be that window where they have all these guys together to make a push. NFC, it's a pretty significant trade from the Seahawks. The Jets, Seahawks perspective, (laughs) uh, it's... They need a quarterback big time. But the Seahawks' perspective, this makes things interesting with those two, three, four teams that I think are going to compete to, out of that uh, conference to make the Super Bowl. Who, who are the two, three, four in your opinion? Uh, Seattle, set, it sounds yeah, like. Can, can we set the Falcons in there, too? I mean, I, still, yeah, I think we can. It's just psychologically that we might leave them shorthanded. I think the Packers and I think the Cowboys would be that quartet. Okay. Okay. Am I missing somebody? No, I mean, no. no. The Cardinals? I, I, no. I think you're fine. Here, here's maybe the Panthers, but here's the, the thing. Panthers. Cam Newton's health, such a question The mark. Buccaneers? That's the thing. The whole NFC South got better. Everybody improved. And it's tough to say that about a Saints team that dealt Brandon Cooks to the Patriots, but the Saints got so much better running the football. They have a stable. I mean, Alvin Kamara is third string. He'd be starting for half the NFL. But you got Mark Ingram and you got Adrian Peterson, oh, by the way, who we just didn't see much of. Maybe it is in, the Seahawks. Yeah, when I, when I sent, mentioned these names and you mentioned these names, maybe it's the Seahawks who we should put at number one there. I, maybe they have the least amount of questions of the others. Aaron Rodgers thinks the Packers are going to run the ball more than they have in recent memory, honestly. I'd rather the Packers pass the ball more. I would too. <laughs> You're talking fantasy football. Yes. There you go. Well, no, just talking for their success because obviously <laughs> when, he, when he said, I got guys get on my shoulders. Yeah. Uh, he took them places. Yeah, but was... if you but if yeah if you can run the ball though, you can keep your defense, which is not good. You can keep them off the field right. just a little bit, and it hey, brings it all back. Martellus Bennett plays for the Packers. Lock it in. Look what Seahawks we Bengals Super Bowl. I'll say this: you talk about windows being open. Just you know, window closing for the Seahawks. Windows should have closed on the Arizona Cardinals a couple of years ago. I don't know what's still holding that thing open, but it is. Carson Palmer's still Carson there. Carson Palmer, that's it. He's on a pitch He's count. not there. He, he should be. I'm amazed that he's still in the NFL. He's 37. With, with an injury history in some cases. Uh, maybe this one year, many years ago, but it just, that's, he's old. He's, he's old. old. And he's throwing to an, to an old Larry Fitzgerald yeah, as well. Fitzgerald's, give him credit, but the guy's got a lot of wear and tear on it. David Johnson's going to get all the touches. And the opponents know that. And opponents know, but they weren't able to stop it a year ago, Max. That's the thing. That is... Uh, the issue there. So uh, that's the trade that went on that Adam Schefter, like we said, almost broke uh, on the show. There is other NFL news coming in. And Adam sort of Adam touched on it because it's it, the, the sheer number game here where the NFL took down that intermediate cut. It used to be you went from about 90 to 70 something and then you went down to 53. Well, they cut out the 75 cut. So now you go from 90 plus to the 53 man roster for 32 teams. You know what I mean? Like it's- we're. That's it's, a lot of work. It's more than 1,000 people who are going to lose their job, and 300 or so will be added to practice squads, but that's still 800 guys, uh, and I'm taking this right off of Adam's Twitter feed here, but about 800 players where their NFL dream is going to end by 4 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. And that's the worst part, but you always imagine being in this, and we see it on hard knocks a lot, the, the process for coaches, and they have to have a human touch. And, and it's Obviously, you'd much rather give the news than have to take the news, but that's tough. For these guys you've made a relationship with to be whomever it is and walk in that room and mm-hmm. tell these guys this, and you have to do it over and over again. And it's That's how you start your season, you know, by breaking a lot of hearts, if right. you can say. It, that stinks. That does stink. And these are names that we're starting to recognize losing their jobs. Chris Johnson has been cut, the running back, uh, longtime running back, uh, the Jets and the Titans. Maybe uh, the mix for being the best running back in football five years ago. Yeah, CJ 2K, and yeah. he's uh, the Arizona Cardinals cut him. Uh, Patriots cut Gronkowski, Glenn Gronkowski. Don't hey. want to don't want to cause a panic, but they you know the cuts are coming in. Adam Schefter's got them. It's all over NFL Twitter right now. 4 p.m. Eastern tomorrow is the deadline. Hey, a reminder: when you're hanging out at another kid's soccer tournament or barbecuing with your in-laws, make sure you take your ESPN app with you to stay up on everything happening in the game. It's simple, it's easy, and it keeps you connected. Take ESPN with you everywhere. Download the ESPN app now. Some other news I saw. Allow me on this show to be the first to congratulate Serena Williams on the birth of her baby girl. Baby girl. Baby girl. Hey. Serena is a mother, uh, and she's going to love it, and now people are going to put her on the clock to see when she can get back to the tennis court. But take your time, Serena. Not just put Enjoy her. Enjoy it. 
not just put her on the clock. They're going to put the rest of the women's tour on the yes. clock because Serena is coming back. I haven't seen the. It's going to be tough for the field. It's it's going to be. <laughs> it is going to be tough. Came, she just had a baby too. She's going to be ready to. She's going to be is. ready to take it out on some of you guys. It is going to be tough for the field. Uh, possibly impressions. When we are we doing impressions when we come back? We are doing impre- impressions. Are we allowing calls for the impressions? Oh, call boy. in the number eight eight eight. Us, Randy Scott can tackle. I some can as try eight eight eight. Say ESPN. Mine are, mine are terrible, Randy. I just do them, you and that's the whole premise. San- I do the worst impressions. You sandbag and son of yeah. a gun! How dare you? Three two nine. Say it one more time. Eight eight eight. Seven two nine three seven seven six. Seven two nine three seven seven six. Eight eight eight. Say ESPN with your impression request for Max. Max Bredas, Randy Scott, The Rosillo Show on ESPN Radio. Starting to get some impression requests on uh, on Twitter. We'll see if we can squeeze those in. We already have, it uh, looks like, full phone lines. The Ryan Rosillo Show reminding you, if you miss any of the show, you can subscribe to our Best Of podcast available in the Listen tab of the ESPN app. Max Bredas, Randy Scott with you, filling in for Ryan on The Ryan Rosillo Show. Uh, it's been a rough week, Max, for our friends in, in Houston, really throughout South Texas. Uh, you can help people affected by Hurricane Harvey by visiting www.redcross.org slash ESPN or really simply by texting the word Harvey to 90999. That's 9999 to make a $10 donation. Show up on your phone bill, I think. It seem, seems to be how I remember this happening and ha- how it works. So really simple, really easy, uh, and your money's going uh, to a good place yep. and to people who need it. And if it's not the Red Cross, just donate some. There's so many great charities out there that will help the situation and the the outpouring continues from uh, people with the money mm-hmm. that are continuing to do it. And uh, a well documented J.J. Watt, who I've already said, make him the sportsman of the year because of what he's done. If it was that easy to raise fourteen, fifteen million dollars, then everyone would be doing it. He's putting in the hard work. I think I cannot say enough good things no. about what he's done. Nope, no, we uh, take our take our we have our comments about J.J. and some of the stuff on social media, but you cannot argue with what he's doing now. We can argue, though, with Max's overall appearance, and it's something we discussed earlier in the show. Previously on the Ryan Rossillo Show. Do you smell my fragrance? It's, yeah, it's... It's uh, Lerme from Yves Saint Laurent. I say it's, it's earthier than, than usual. Uh, we were talking about your outfit. Again, explain what's on the sleeves, because people are going to see it's them. It's a suspender. It looks like a garter, but it's uh. a suspender... And uh, just puts it up there. I wouldn't have bought this. My wife, uh, my wife buys me these clothes, and I just put them on. And a, f- a few days ago, I saw Max Scherzer wearing that. It looked really shazzy. Nice. And I saw someone on one of the uh, the uh, celebrity magazines at the airport wearing them too. And you know, I've been wearing this for about a year or so. So my wife's got her finger on the pulse. So I just let her take charge of dressing me like a like a porcelain doll. I continue to dress uh, like an intern around here and that's kind of uh, it's kind of my brand now. You can come much. over, hey, if you want, you can come over and see maybe we can get her a little side business going. Be like, "Hey, dress I, the anchors." <laughs> fashion is like, "I need a shirt that has a pocket that looks like a pocket square." That's what I need. Oh, I didn't have that one too. Yeah. What, there it goes. It's got. multi-layered. Love it. <laughs> As your wife, does your wife we'll watch? dress you up, Randy. Does your wife watch or listen? When you're uh, sometimes I probably okay. not. I think there's a school function, so she's probably there. So she didn't know if we if you gave her the the plug on the show or not. Okay, so phone lines, Michelle. You want me to start at the Wait, top? Before we go, I want to do one impression yeah. that I came up with this week. I know it's very dated. Oh, okay. But Placido Domingo, the famous tenor, singing, doing the uh, the production of Annie. All right, are you ready for it? I'm ready. Okay. It's a hard knock life <laughs> for us. It's a hard knock life for us. Instead of treated, we get tricked. Instead of kisses, we get kicked. It's a hard knock life. Thank you very much. Uh, you came up with that this week? Came up like 10 well, minutes in the shower. Well done. I was singing. Well done. And you know, it was a little Spanish accent with the trying to the tenor tone, which I tr- kind of can get there. Yeah. So there you go, that folks. Was good. Free of charge. Really good. All right, let's see if Scott in Louisiana has a more random combination than that. <laughs> Scott? Hey, how you doing today, man? Hey, Scott. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'd like to hear him uh, do Christopher Walken explaining why Lamar Jackson would not win the Heisman Trophy again this year. <laughs> I love the specifics. That's you do good. it because I did a walk-in impression a couple weeks ago. And it was uh, awful. Well, then you do it. Then no, then you your, do it. Okay, so why Lamar Jackson won't win the Heisman Trophy? Right. Guys, got what appears to be <laughs> dynamite sound. Here's the thing. You're down Louisiana playing quarterback, and your name is Lamar Jackson. Your stats. Or Louisville. Half to what I say. Louisiana. Who's telling the Sorry, my, 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 my Who's telling the story? Sorry, Mr. Walker. Me. <laughs> so shut up. 
<laughs> you got your stats have to beat the stats from last year. That's how it's got to go. Thanks, Scott. Look at the whole crew in, Lu- in Louisiana. <laughs> Got what appears hey, to stop, be. stop raining on my segment, yes. Scott. It's You're doing di- too good. Dynamite sound. Uh, my home state, Virginia. Woo! Amber, what's going Amber. on? Hi. Uh, yeah, this is Amber from Virginia Beach, and I would love to hear someone do some Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> Can you do a McConaughey? Uh, I got to ramp up for this one. <laughs> Well, there was nothing specific, but she's from no. Virginia. So from let's Virginia, talk Virginia about, Beach, uh, Tidewater. Maybe uh, Virginia Tech. Well, that's not that's from. That's the, fine. You can do Virginia, Virginia Tech. Tech. Do it. I don't yeah. know anything about the Virginia football team. Okay, that's all right. They're not good. Uh, hey, <laughs> you can say what you want about uh, you can say what you want about Virginia Tech this season, but Bud Foster's still there. <laughs> that's more Jack Nicholson than I know. <laughs> Isn't that more Nicholson than hey, McConaughey? Bud Foster. Guys, Bud guys. Foster, man. Are oh, you do it, boys? Uh, boys. Boy. Go Boys, uh, got a good football team there. Black what are you? You're doing George W. Bush, man. I don't. Uh, Texas is Texas, man. <laughs> That's the thing. Try, try Boys, this, got any bears? Let's try this again. Virginia Tech's going to be good until they run into the Longhorns. Be, be you like, know what I mean, Shelly B? <laughs> be a lot cooler if you did. Party <laughs> a, <laughs> there you go. Party Takes a the, while to ramp into it. Party at the Moon Tower. Got about six kegs. Be there. You ever work with John Five, Wiley six, over six. in the in Yes, production? he sounds like Wiley McConaughey. sounds like him. Let's get yes, to Mitch in Toledo. We got less than a minute. Mitch, what's up? Hello again, Ryan. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that rides off today. That, that Carl Edwards is one fine-looking youngster, isn't he? <laughs> Man, <laughs> I never would have thought a NASCAR driver could throw such a good fastball. <laughs> Straight out of the bullpen, and, and he could drive a car like no one's business. I keep waiting for him to do a backflip after a save. <laughs> I, I'm still waiting. That Mitch Mitch hijacked the whole deal. Hey, That's, Mitch, I like your t- uh, Toledo football. is going to be good this season. There we go. Don't lie to the college. Logan match. Woodside, Don't. dark horse uh, Kaiserman candidate. This week, tune in to the Paul Feinbaum Show as I discuss... The delicious taste of ice cold, Dr. Pepper. Larry Culpepper? Hey, I'm in the middle of a promo. Sorry, Finey. The fans are craving so much Dr. Pepper, I thought I'd borrow some of your airtime. Security! Hey, look, whether you're watching college football or calling to some guy's radio show, Dr. Pepper makes college football that much sweeter. So grab some of your local store today. Can I have one of yours? Hey, we got a caller. You're on the Larry Culpepper Show with your host, Larry Culpepper. That's it. That's Dr. Pepper, the one fans crave. Podcast with Randy Scott and Max Bredos. Our thoughts on the start of the college football season. Is the SEC weighed down? Plus, Kyrie calls himself courageous for leaving Cleveland. The Ryan Rossillo Show Podcast. Max Bredos, Randy Scott, in for Ryan. Do you smell my fragrance? It's, yeah, it's... It's uh, Lum from Yves Saint Laurent. It's, it's earthier than, than usual. Uh, we were talking about your outfit. Again, explain what's on the sleeves because people are going to see it. It's them. a suspender. It looks like a garter, but it's huh. a suspender and uh, just puts it up there. I wouldn't have bought this. My wife uh, my wife buys me these clothes, and I just put them on. And a, f- a few days ago, I saw Max Scherzer wearing that. It looked really shazzy. Right. And I saw someone on one of the uh, the uh, celebrity magazines at the airport wearing them, too. And you know, I've been wearing this for about a year or so. So my wife's got her finger on the pulse, so I just let her take charge of Dressing me like a like a porcelain doll. I continue to dress uh, like an intern around here, and that's kind of uh, it's kind of my brand now. You can come much. over, hey, if you want. You can come over. We'll see. Maybe we can get her a little side business going. Be like, hey, dress I- the anchors. <laughs> Fashion is lovely. I need a shirt that has a pocket that looks like a pocket square. That's what I need. Oh, I didn't have that one too. Yeah. What, there it goes. It's got. multi-layered. Love it. I love it. Um, so over the next hour, I, I think college football heavy would be a Oof. nice way a nice way to put it. Obviously, the Zeke Elliott story. That a lot of shows are leading with. Uh, a lot of shows are spending a lot of time on today. You know, nothing's changed with regard to that from them to us, but we'll give our spin on it. Uh, another situation where the NFL maybe doesn't come off uh, looking all that good. Maybe. <laughs> but last night, Max, college football back, not only on this network, but, but elsewhere. Ohio State, Indiana. I know you're not the biggest Big Ten guy in the world, but interesting to see the Buckeyes start on the road in conference. Well, I, 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 I think Ohio State's going to be number one at the end. I think we got a little bit, of, a little bit of a scare there, but I think we will see what's going to happen by and large in this season because we have these powerful teams. We don't know all the personnel about them, but we're going to discover them. We discovered a little bit of Ohio State, 
And uh, Dave Fleming, who was calling the the game last night, made a point. He goes, this is these third string guys from Ohio State shutting down the Indiana. Just too much depth. So I think Ohio State is, is going to be there because of that depth. And I think we'll see similar things with Alabama, maybe Florida State. But Ohio State, Michigan with some recruits is a team that could do the same thing. But I I think people might be down on Ohio State a little bit because of that. I'm not on down on them at all. It looked like they're working things out, and I think it's it's going to be a very rosy future for them. You think Ohio State's going to be number one at the end of the I think state? they'll be the number one team. Number one team going into the playoffs. They'll be the top They'll be the top the, seed. Correct. Okay. I think they're losing next week to Oklahoma. To Oklahoma? Yeah. I just, I'm not buying any of the Big 12. I, I want to, and I see a lot of Baker Mayfield Heisman. I see a lot of Oklahoma getting in there. I just... Yeah. I don't think so. I just don't think they have this depth. I don't think they have those, these monsters on the offensive, defensive line that Ohio State or in Alabama has. These guys just disrupt. They just recruit at a different level. Well, Greg Shiano, I'm glad you brought up the Ohio State defense because I remember it's, it was insane. I'm, you see the guys they just pour out one after the NFL defensive lineman in their third string. Well, okay, great. I'm glad you're throwing out NFL <laughs> defensive linemen as well because Greg Shiano is the guy who, what, four or five weeks ago, beginning of August, said this is the most talented defensive line. I've ever had. And they say, Coach, I know it was forgettable for a lot of Buccaneer fans, but perhaps you've forgotten. You were an NFL head coach as well. You wasn't well. thinking about Rutgers, you think? <laughs> you had some great You had some great talent in the NFL. You had Michael Bennett. You had uh, uh, Gerald McCoy. Yeah. You, know, you had some great talent, and he doubled down on it. Wow. This is with the Big Ten Network. He said, this is the most talented defensive line I've ever had. Okay, well, that defensive line last night... They weren't shredded by Indiana, but they gave up a 400-yard passing game to a guy in Richard La- Lego, Legal, Lego, 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 my well, ego. Well, I mean, four ten, and a lot of that is thrown from behind, so the yardage can be inflated. He threw the ball sixty five times, but there was a stretch here where the Buckeye defense looked a little pedestrian. Yes, and you, I know you're probably asleep for this because you have to be up early because of your uh, now your Washington Post cover boy on your <laughs> next morning show yeah, with yeah. Sage and Jay. Mm-hmm. So you're probably in bed seven p.m. Tricycle doesn't move without the third wheel, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of how that. <laughs> Kind of how that We're, works. Hey, Randy, no one's prouder than you. I'm so thrilled to see you in, in, in there in that situation. <laughs> Thanks, but I, Herb Street came on with Van Pelt later, and he made, he said the, the weak link for that Ohio State team is the defensive backfield because they're new, not that they're not talented. Yeah. So that Indiana had to get those passes off, and he did, and they took advantage of that, and eventually. Three strep, three step drops, or whatever you lower it down a bit, and that defensive line is going to. Close the distance, which they did. And that secondary is going to get better. So you just look at that defense. It looks like an NFL. I hate to say it. It looks like an NFL team. It isn't an NFL team. It looks like an NFL team. Strong, big, fast. We've been talking, uh, you know, Trevor Maddich all week, some of our other college football brain trusts, and uh, they're talking about how, you know, this is cornerback you at Ohio State. It's no longer tailback you, cornerback you because of the talent that they turn out. It's You know what? It's time for Straight Talk, brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, no contracts. As we get into the two things, Max, that we think will happen this season and the two things we think won't happen. And I think maybe you've already touched on one. The one thing you think will happen, I mean, you're all in on the Buckeyes. Yes, and a part of me is I think they'll, the schedule and they'll be able to navigate through the Big Ten. I, I think you have Michigan. Michigan is the intriguing team to me because I think a lot of people are knocking them down a bit because they lost all those guys to the, the NFL. But I think we'll find out how well Jim Harbaugh is recruiting and if he's doing something. I think coaching-wise, he's he's one of those guys right there with Urban Meyer, right below Nick Saban. Mm-hmm. I think coaching-wise with the, with the talent – I get the feeling Michigan's going to be there at the end. With guys, we don't know who they are, but they will emerge. So I still think Ohio State's another level. But the one thing I think that will happen is Alabama will run through the SEC. And I'm we're going to talk about this throughout the program, but the SEC, I'm, I'm not an SEC basher. I would love to see the SEC second, third, fourth place teams move up so Alabama gets challenged and gets beaten once or twice a year. I don't think they're going to get touched. I just don't think the talent's there. I, I like Auburn enough. That's at the end. But the SEC East teams, jury is still out. I just don't think the gap has been closed with Alabama. If not, maybe Alabama's even grown it the last two years. We're going we're gonna to go next level. We're going to go deep on the SEC here uh, coming up. Top of the 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern hour. Efforting Peter Burns from the SEC Network. Uh, our, our, you know, sort of sister, our brothers in arms here in college football arms uh, down in Charlotte, North Carolina. But I, I think with regard to what you said about Alabama, I th- here's the one thing I expect, the one thing I think will happen. Alabama and Auburn, the Saturday after Thanksgiving, that's not only for the SEC, uh, well, certainly for a trip to Atlanta, That that that's a college football playoff game. 
I, I think both teams are undefeated. Getting to that to point. To Auburn. Yes, Auburn, Alabama, both teams undefeated. Getting to that point, whoever wins that is not only going to Atlanta, whoever wins that is going uh, to the college football playoff. So that's one thing I think. So you got Ohio State, you got Bama. The other thing I think, you know, people are kind of, they're focusing on Ohio State last night. Oklahoma State, I know it was Tulsa, but Oklahoma State is is somehow lying in the weeds here. They look tremendous. They're capable that of. The game putting, was over the half against a good Tulsa team. Were they in the AAC or the. I, I'm not no, sure where the, Tulsa is. Tulsa I'll find out. Was, I'll check my magazine that I brought in. Do it. Yeah. It, my magazine, so my reference book. <laughs> you got it at a Borders. I mean, I haven't seen, I haven't seen <laughs> I that. Him? No, it's, I don't know. It's not a company. It's not, it's not a company line, but I just no. saw it and I picked it because it's easy to, it's less pages. Less pages, the right. better for me. More pictures, better for me as well. ESPN, the magazine available on newsstands everywhere and wherever magazines can be downloaded. Let's put that out there because that is definitely not an ESPN uh, product, but just because you already shredded through it. The other thing, I, so I, I got Oak State as a, as a college football playoff team. I do. Right. You, they can put you, 60 you, up on you in a, in a heartbeat. They got th- you think Oklahoma's going to beat Ohio I, State, yes. but you think Oklahoma State's going to get Oklahoma. There you go. All right, just check That's it. it. So the two things, the, the, what won't happen, do you want to get into the negative or you want to say, why don't we put a pin in that? We'll get to the two college football things we th- we don't think will happen. That's coming up as we also get into the Zeke Elliott situation. Straight Talk brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Nationwide coverage on America's largest and most dependable 4G LTE networks. Tulsa in the American Athletic Conference. Boom. Nailed that. Uh, so Predicted got- to finish second in the West. The Ryan Rossillo Show. Rossillo. Let's pay off. The second part of that college football deal, real quick, the two things that we think won't happen this season, that we don't think will happen. And for me, I don't think the ACC gets a team into the college football oh. playoff. Why? Uh, it's more personal between you and I. No, it's, I, I, you know, Florida State loses tomorrow. I think Florida State is going to be the, the, the team with the best shot. I just see them going up against three. I think they're going to be three undefeated teams that are no brainers to get in Oak State, uh, Ohio State, and, um, no, Oak State, uh, USC, I'm sorry, USC and Alabama. So then you're going to have a one-loss Ohio State battling with a one-loss Florida State, let's say, maybe with a one-loss Louisville or a Clemson. You know what I mean? Like I just feel like that water's going to get so muddy. You, just, I can you respect see. the ACC too much. I, I don't respect the ACC at all, I think is part of my deal. This year, just this year, uh, last year, see, wagon. I, I, I would agree with you because I think the depth is going to be a concern because all the good ACC teams are on the same division. Florida State, Clemson, Louisville, and I think you throw NC State. You have Miami. People love NC State. People this love year. NC, but they're strong. I mean, they and you know, as a Florida State guy, I'll tell you, they just always give the Seminoles issues. So that could really muck yeah. things up there uh, a, a fair bit. Uh, I, I, I kind of want to say that something won't happen. Is that we th- th- there will not be a team like South Florida who's getting some love running the table, getting anywhere near the college football playoff because of a point you made. I think, th- and there's also the talk. Maybe a two-loss team makes the playoffs. Neither of these things are going to happen because I think they're going to be undefeated teams. When you look at the yeah. schedules, they're very favorable for for several for several of them. I mean, even a school like Wisconsin, if they can get hot, their schedule is cake. If they beat Ohio State in a Big Ten championship game, they'll be there. And I think USC has that potential as well. So uh, I think it's going to be messy with undefeated teams at the end. That's going to repel some of the nicer stories or two-loss teams from getting into any further along. I think there's a real chance... South Florida is the highest ranked I think they team will be, in the state of Florida by okay, the end now, of the Now you're going to... Far. By the time we go into the college now football gone, playoff, no, now you made it there's personal. a real chance. No, no, I, no. Be, there's a real chance. Your offensive line, Matt, Max. Nah. How nah. come Alabama and all these... Hey, they just reload. We can't reload an offensive line. We'll have to put know. two that, guys in there. Talk to Jimbo. That seems you know, like a Jimbo thing. We, I don't have, we got I don't a have mobile quarterback... They're gonna they're gonna build it to protect him. Better be mobile. And the defense is gonna again. wear out the other offense. All right. All so right. that's so that's our college football. We'll get uh, obviously much more into it. Uh, the one stat, quite frankly, that uh, <laughs> Indiana hung its hat on four of six catchable balls made with one hand. They made six attempts at one handed grabs last night, and they caught four of them. Yeah. That's not gonna not, happen again against not in the Ohio fourth State. Quarter. Not, yeah, that's true. It's not gonna happen again against Ohio State. So everybody who's kind of that game, by the way, lasted almost four hours. That was it. Yeah. It was a hard watch at times. It was. I it was like was. grinding. I was like, "Oh, my wife goes that game not over." I go, I'm yeah. gonna, I go "You're watching New Mexico State, Arizona State now. <laughs> nice try." <laughs> Sorry, I just it's like it she's down. in the room. It was You're getting close there. That's good. Uh, speaking of another hard, how's this segue? Hard watch to another hard watch. Uh, this situation with Ezekiel, with, with Ezekiel Elliott is is interesting because it puts you if you really want to be rational about it and you really want to be objective. It's tough not to feel 
something in the way of sympathy, empathy for the guy accused of domestic violence in this. It's really tough because of some of the details we're learning about the NFL, the investigation, disregarding the findings of the lead investigator who herself believed Zeke should not be suspended. The NFL ran through that stop sign, no no criminal charges, and handed and handed this down. Like this it's, is, it's 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 murky waters here in terms of just a moral standpoint. Well, and, and to your point, and this is such a delicate issue. And look, we're, we it's abundantly clear, and we know why. And it's you want uh, due process, and you want all the evidence to be held up in a certain way. And if it's not there, it's not there. And for Ezekiel Elliott. Under these circumstances, to your point, I, I think it was great. I think you, you put it perfectly. You feel for the, the process. He has cooperated. He's done all these things, and yet he's clear in the in the court of public opinion. And some, not the court of public opinion, but the court's there, but not through the NFL. And now they're going to rule with a heavy fist because of things that have happened in the past. It's becoming more evident to that as well. And it's they should all be judged on individual basis. And right now, if you look at this, it's hard to say that – if even if you are, even if you haven't heard everything completely clearly, it's hard to say this is a six game suspension, if any game suspension. The NFLPA is pushing for zero games, as they should. The they NFL should go from if there's one game that's going to hang over Ezekiel Elliott. The NFLPA filed a request for a temporary restraining order in the Eastern District of Texas, calling for the courts to block any suspension of Elliott that might be upheld by NFL arbitrator Harold Henderson, according to a court filing obtained by ESPN. Harold Henderson's most There's a preemptive re- strike here for him. What, he, <laughs> Just well, to make sure. One of his most recent higher profile domestic violence appeals that he heard surrounding this within the NFL. It was before the new domestic violence policy that the NFL handed down where six games is the baseline. Six games is the punishment, but it was Greg Hardy and that went from 10 games to 4 games. Hardy was actually ch- charged. Yes. Hardy was never found guilty because Hardy's accuser never testified. They couldn't investigators toward the end, could not get a hold of her. She made she failed to make herself available. Some people say, all right, maybe the deal was worked out, maybe whatever. I don't, and you know what? If a deal was worked out, I don't have a problem with that. She doesn't get anything. It doesn't help her life if Greg Hardy is suspended. If she gets money from it, if she works out some sort of settlement, and that improves her life, fine. God bless her. More power to her. With this situation with Tiffany Thompson and Zeke Elliott, we know the police were called. We know pictures of bruises on Thompson exist. That much you can't deny. The records are there. The photos are there. What happened to surround all of that is up to the NFL to piece together. It's up to the NFL to get right. And again, Max, they can't do that. They're unable to do it. And at this point, I think you have to, if this blows up in the NFL's face, the NFL has to look at this and almost say, look, we're we're out. We're going to let the courts do what they have to do, and we will abide by those laws by those uh, verdicts because if the nfl keeps putting their foot in it and right now this is heading right in that direction again the nfl should focus on football i think i and let the courts do this because it's it's not adding up we got more on this including what the motive might be like why would the nfl the nfl's out to get zeke elliott why it's it's the yankees of the nfl the dallas cowboys are the preeminent brand and this is one of their biggest young superstars. So I, I fail to see any reason why they would go after him. Although I felt the same way about, about Brady. Uh, there are similar, you know, America's team, Captain America, all of that. Okay, Kevin, for the grand prize of $1 million, what color is the White House? Um, I know this, I know this, I know this. Um, five seconds. Oh, switching to Geico could save you a bunch of money on car insurance? Okay. Judges, that's true, Kevin. They'll allow it. Congratulations. You're a winner. Geico, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. It's the Rosillo Show. It's back on ESPN Radio with Max Bredos. Your Instagram game is it's just permeated so many aspects of your life. Rudy was in here, and I was talking to him, and then I yeah. just... So Rudy was in here, and he just stirred it up, and then he wound you up, getting you going on football, and you were excited about EJ Manuel and... Yeah, I was talking about the backup job at, at the Raiders. At the Raiders. You know I'm a Raiders fan. I know you're a Raiders fan. That's why I brought it up to you, too. All right. I'm kind of surprised. I wonder what happened to Matt McGloin. i gotta, I got to jump in on this. It is the Ryan Rosillo Show on ESPN Radio. Hey, when you're hanging out uh, at another kid's soccer tournament or barbecuing with your in-laws, 
make sure you take your ESPN app with you to stay up on everything happening in sports. It's simple, it's easy, and it keeps you connected. Take ESPN with you everywhere. Download the ESPN app uh, now. So, uh, Max, I, <laughs> you brought it up again. I'm giving you constant credit here. Labor Day weekend, and what's the story that Sports Center broke in with earlier in Boston? We should be talking about playoff baseball, push, uh, and football, and all. We are stuff. in the month of September. Yeah, and the NBA is still making us lick our chops. <laughs> and is that is that a? It's true. No, it's true. Wet our whistle towards the NBA season. We're excited about it because look, I see Kyrie Irving, Gordon Hayward stand up there being announced with their jerseys, and I'm like, first of all, you you, you wrap around those players, not so much Hayward. But certainly Kyrie Irving, who's been associated with one team and has been in the limelight so much. We just haven't seen enough jazz games. All, all due respect to everyone in Salt Lake City yeah. and around there in the Beehive State. But we've seen Kyrie Irving with that one jersey, and then you see him in this green, and you're, wow. I go, I can't wait to see that. I cannot wait to see this team because it's become like the fifth or sixth team that has improved exponentially in the off season. You're like, this has made the regular season, which was a struggle, that much better. And look... There might be another week or 10 days of the NBA taking more off the plate of the NFL. Because the NFL season's here. They're off season. They, they missed the boat. <laughs> it, feel, it feels like everybody's trying to get their news out there, make their waves, make their splashes before September 7th when the NFL season starts up. I think once the NFL season starts up, we're, we're cooked. We're done. It's all NFL. Right. College football, too. But it's all football. But you think... We'll talk about the Kyrie Irving thing here shortly, but you think the uh, NBA is taking stock of all this and go, whatever we did, let's map it out again. Mm -hmm. We're going to be free agents. We can keep this this active, our deadlines here and there when they begin, when they end, so we can seize this window because it comes with the huge dollar sign. There's no doubt about it because people are buying jerseys, people are getting engaged, people are getting ramped up for the NBA. I'm not trying to shoehorn hockey in where it doesn't belong here, but hockey. one thing, hold on, I, I was talking to some radio guys in Toronto a couple weeks ago and they said, what can the NHL do to become relevant, you know, to really break in again in, in the U.S.? And I said, the playbook's there. It, it's there. It's the NBA. Do what the NBA is doing. But can you imagine if the NBA had an expansion draft this offseason as well? All the craziness, plus we're putting a team in Vegas, and here's the expansion draft, and you can only protect three or four guys on each one. You know what I mean? That's how far back the NHL is. They had that this summer, and it barely registered because the NBA was such a, a, a goliath. Well, you don't have these recognizable star powers. No, no one has. No, no sport has right now. This is mm -hmm. unprecedented that we know the top 20, 30 NBA players. Everyone does. And that they change franchises. And they change franchises so willy-nilly. And one of them did officially today. That's Kyrie Irving. Here's Kyrie. and. Uh, Want to get your reaction? Listen to one word here on how he describes his decision to ask for a trade. Honestly, coming off of the finals loss and kind of not wallowing in my sorrows, but trying to figure out the next step in order to achieving that goal and um, in doing that uh, made it just a very courageous decision in order to take my my myself and, and my intent and want to be a part of something bigger than myself and. Whew. When Boston came and knocking, I was answering. So um, it, it was it was pretty awesome about the way it all transpired. Okay, what word jumped out? Courageous, he, courageous. and it, it is courageous. You you really to ask I, for a trade? I think because he's in this NBA where everyone is heading towards the contenders. Where Kevin Durant, you know, many people in Oklahoma City said he sold his soul to devil to leave the team to become a member of the Warriors. He's been vindicated, certainly. But you move towards where you win a title. That is so important. Kyrie Irving has a title. Maybe that's fa helped facilitate this a bit. But you want to win more. You want to be remembered. That takes some... Yeah, that takes a little bit of some wherewithal to be able to do that because there's blow up in his face. This is what he is going to be remembered. If yeah. he gets caned by the Cavaliers and LeBron this season and they never win a title, they're going, what were you doing? What For, were you doing? It's that, a, takes some, that takes some courage. Courage, it sounds like you would use a different word that maybe we can't use on I know, the radio. I was going to use it in Spanish, and I go, you still can't say it in Spanish. <laughs> and I know people do, but you're not supposed to because it's still a bad word. Gotcha. Well, I'll say this. It's the first time since 2008. This is how important Kyrie is, how important Gordon Hayward has been, and maybe how unimportant or insignificant with regard to win total Isaiah Thomas was. For the first time since 2008, a LeBron James team in the Eastern Conference is not projected to have the highest win total. And that's according, obviously, to the folks out in Vegas. Cleveland's second, and it's close, but this year it's all in 
on Boston in the Eastern Conference. One more thing, speaking of LeBron, one more thing. Kyrie Irving asked about his now former teammate today at the introductory press conference. What's your relationship like with LeBron now, and have you spoken to him since this whole with asking for the trade? No, I haven't uh, spoken to him. And uh, my uh, intent, like I said, was uh, for my best intentions and to look back at the amount of ground we covered in the last three-year span or even before that because we had a prior relationship and um, to, to, to really realize how special that was and how much growth happened in that amount of time. I'd be sitting up here and telling you guys a lie if I didn't tell you I learned so much from that guy. I think that's fair. I think, Wait, he's, I think he said I have, I have not talked to LeBron. Have not talked to LeBron right off the bat. You believe him? Whether I believe him or not, and if, if, if this happened with Durant and uh, Durant as well as Westbrook, and that is something that they whether they didn't they spoke and they didn't speak, that bothers me. If they want to keep that between themselves, I, I that's fine. But just say yeah, I spoke to him, but that's not in your business. But there's something that's very odd there about these relationships that I don't talk about. This is a guy you've basically been your brother. He's been your, your everything, your partner, and all this stuff. We saw that with Durant and Westbrook. They didn't talk. I go, I don't understand why you don't talk for two minutes, even if it's brief and if it's angry. You go, this is what I want, and they'll mm-hmm. understand. I don't understand not talking. And if you did talk, why are you telling us that we didn't talk? Both sides I don't agree with. Here's the thing. LeBron doesn't have his ring without Kyrie. But LeBron gets all the credit. So I understand Kyrie's desire to do this. I understand his desire to be the man. But at the same time, he knows full well he, the road – to repeating that. Like, I think he's properly motivated. You mentioned how winning a title affords you that latitude to be able to explore your option, join a team that you want to join. Well, now he knows he has to deliver on that. I think he's yep. properly motivated in Boston. The Ryan Rossillo Show. Rossillo. There's a lot of things that are, are getting us excited about the college football season. And uh, coming into the opening week, the love for Alabama has been there paramount, as you're grinning at me. Because you don't believe in it. No, I do. I just... I there is the curtain's going to be pulled back by Nick Saban, and we're going to see some guys that are going to become first round picks, first round linebacker, first round defensive line. We're going to get familiar with over the next few weeks. Uh, I, I know Rodney Harrison. That's of the defensive guys, the guys that I know well for Alabama. It's Rodney Harrison's there, and there's a couple other guys that will fill. Everyone else is kind of an unknown quantity that we're going to get to know pretty intimately as the weeks ahead. My, I've never been. Look, I, I, I'm an ACC guy. I love the ACC. I love Florida State. I love to see the ACC do well. When the schools of the ACC are playing Florida State, I am pulling for them. It makes us all look good. <laughs> now, the SEC, I think I want Alabama to be pulled back a little bit. But I look at the rest of the conference, and I go, who's going to be doing the pulling? And there is a detachment, and it seems to be getting bigger every week. And got us to thinking, because of that reason, I want Alabama challenge. I want Alabama to have an SEC loss every year if possible. I think that's good for them. It's good for college football, but I see an Alabama team that's going to run through the SEC, quite frankly. I like Auburn a bit. The rest, and we, we spoke with Heather Dinich, these, these teams that currently in the polls reside 14 through 20, uh, LSU and Auburn and Florida, and they have their own issues, and Georgia, but who is going to be that team who reaches for Alabama and at least drags themselves up to the top? I don't think it's LSU. I want it to be I, LSU. I want it to be LSU, and I just... Can't, I, I, I really tried for it to be LSU, and I just couldn't put my stamp of approval on it. LSU will give you some of the best running, you know, running back talent in the country, year in and year out. But once again, quarterbacks are Danny question. Etling. Are you excited about no, Danny Etling? No, no me neither. And, and that Ogeron, feels like settling on something. We had Coach O on campus this summer. You know, for a guy who gets excited about so much so easily, even he didn't sound like Danny Etling was... You know, a world beater. I think it's more because Coach O spits the truth and speaks the truth, and that's how he connects with his roster. But we like Ogeron. We want it to be LSU. We want LSU to be something it's not, and that's on Alabama's level, right? We want a team on Alabama's level. We want it to be LSU because they played each other so tough year in and year out. And regardless who's coach, they're going to recruit lights out. They're in their backyard. They have five-star, four-star recruits at their beck and call. Yeah, and, and Ogeron has has done what he can so far to shut the borders off to outside invaders when it comes to recruiting. Shut the borders at at, at uh, Louisiana. But man, I listen, Max. I we, we look at these SEC. You can throw Vandy out. You can throw Kentucky don't out. Don't do that. It's a wonderful no, university. You can. Oh, okay, okay. Missouri, can, Missouri, gone. Missouri is a great quarterback. You can throw them out. Uh, Ole Miss out. Mississippi State out. Like 
you right off the bat, you can eliminate nearly half the conference. And then you look at those that Alabama even plays and the number gets smaller. I think it comes down to the Iron Bowl. I think Auburn is really the, the true test beyond Florida State, the true test on Bama's on Bama's schedule. But I don't remember a time in recent memory where the SEC has been this top heavy. Alabama, world class. And then but the I, drop off happens. You say top heavy, maybe top heavy almost suggests there's three or four teams that are kind of carrying the the flame. And remember, this was a conference that had its issues in bowl season. And the the last two or three seasons I've seen the shine come off a bit. It's not Alabama's fault. They are the gold standard. But these other schools have just missed their targets. Tennessee at the top of that list. And I think they're going to come off the boil again because the expectations are finally lowered for them after it appeared they might have that breakthrough last year. Georgia, I don't know. I don't know. And we we talked before we hit the air about, okay, they got a, Nick Chubb, great running back. Seems like they've had a great running back for 15 years. And then what else? What else can get them over the hump? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I Trust me, SEC... The SEC, folks in the SEC country that listeners, I want the SEC to be good because it's good for college football to keep Alabama in check, but I see Alabama running roughshod. It's amazing to see the talent that gets generated every year, sent to the NFL by the SEC, and it's, it doesn't just come from Alabama. I mean, certainly Nick Saban has sent his share, but it, it comes from all over. It's just, it is such a grind. It is such a grind, and Alabama has been best at navigating it, best at, at positioning itself to get to the college football playoff. It, it, Alabama just doesn't have any holes, man. And I know we don't know the defense, like you say, but don't you trust Saban to not only recruit oh, the right guys, but put him in, right, in the right spot? Do you, one thing that I see in college football that reminds me of what we see in college basketball, it's becoming more about the coaches. It used to be spread out a little bit more, but Nick Saban's kind of... These great coaches, they're not out there where you can fill in. If you need a job, there was an opening at LSU. Uh, and there was an opening at USC. These guys aren't out there where you can give a huge pay uh, check and say, all right, take us to the levels of Alabama, Ohio State. Those guys are already out there, and I think they're causing the separation more than anything else. And I'm talking about Alabama, Ohio State, uh, Florida State, because Jimbo, Jimbo Fish has put his time in, and I put Michigan in there, a super coach that you figure is going to recruit year in, year out. And those guys, I think, and we may see it this year, will continue to separate them because they are they are recruiting at the highest level. Players want to play. Their players want to play for these coaches, I think, in the same way they want to play for Coach Cal, Coach K. Uh, they want to go to those yeah, North Carolina. They want to go to those programs, Roy Williams. Yeah. And that is going to always give them that opportunity to get the best teams. I think, based on the preseason polls, we're seeing that. I don't know. Okay, let me ask you this. We don't want to be slaves to the rankings here. We don't want to be, but, you know, betrothed uh, to the preseason. But, okay, Penn State's at six. The next SEC team, I think, is Auburn at, at 12, or, or at LSU at 12, Auburn at 13, whichever way. Are you telling me, like, neutral site, just by that we go with Penn State? Like, probably not. No. Right? But that's just how it shakes out. It's coming off of last year, looking at the roster, all of it. But I still, like, there are still SEC teams that you if you see them on your schedule, it's gonna throw throw a scare into you, and and that's you know that's even, but not that's like even a Texas A and M. No, no, not like it used to. I think Texas A and M is a perfect example. That's a team you see and now. You're like, right, we got these guys, and it's yeah. Florida with their issues. It's just so much, so much uncertainty in the SEC. Part of it with Alabama is Tennessee might not be ranked by the time they play. I have a little faith in them. I maybe, toward the end of October. Do you yeah, really? I, I, Maybe I just know how he's been recruiting. Uh, uh, Five star hearts, Max. That's what he says. <laughs> Five star hearts. At some point, that's got to come to the surface, or maybe he, then he's not the right fit. But I think now the it seems less of the pressures on the pressure is definitely on him, but less of the pressure from the media is on it because they're not expected to win the East. They're not expected to be a top three, two, three, four team yeah. in the uh, SEC overall. And they're that caught in the up 20s to somewhere. That caught up to him last year. You come in as a top ten team. Stumble out of the gate. You got four losses by the end of it. A lot of schools, even in the SEC, eight and four, nine and four. That's a successful year. Yeah. Vandy takes that in a heartbeat. Kentucky takes that in a heartbeat, but not at Tennessee. Not when you're measuring yourself against Alabama, however unrealistic that may be. I will say, don't sleep on Georgia. Is it, that who would you say? Who is that one? I hope it's Georgia. Georgia. I just I love everything about their program. I just it's just been frustrating to see them not get the ring. They believe, you know? they believe in Kirby. It's only his second year, and I and I you can you got to give Kirby as far as some patience here. And this is a guy who seems to have all the intangibles to challenge the hierarchy. Yes. in the SEC, and they don't. Alabama and Georgia don't play each other in the regular season. Not to say they wouldn't play each other uh, in the SEC title game. Right, well, we'll see if we get. There. I hope I'm wrong, as I always like to say. <laughs> I hope I am wrong, but I fear I am right. SEC. Max Brodos, Randy Scott. 
filling in for Ryan. Get in touch with us through our 1-800-Flowers Twitter feed. We would love to hear from you. I know you're probably as excited as we are about the commencement of the football season. I have a little announcement, an Instagram announcement. Oh. That starting the NFL season on Fridays on my Instagram feed, Embredos, the much-loved, certainly by Ryan, David Bowie. You like it, too? And by me, yeah. David Bowie will be making my David Bowie impression. We'll be making NFL picks every Friday. Uh, you'll get a little taste of what, what people are enjoying, I hope. And if it doesn't work three weeks, I'll change it to Mick Jagger or someone else. But you know, jump on there, and we'll be able to do that. It should be a lot of fun. So what do you – well, I mean, the first game is on a Thursday, so is that going to be like so a, I'll probably skip that. I'll probably go thing? Sunday and maybe the Monday night football game. You're going to skip Tom Brady? Yes. No, David Bowie wouldn't do that. No, i, I got to go right to the Saints and the Vikings and give you my pick. <laughs> That's Have you good. ever seen a Viking up close? No, they're no. terrifying. No, something to that effect. Good, they're terrifying because okay. David Bowie has. I know. Seen. Yes. I, my I, I, my full supports for the Saints, but the Vikings are going to win. Yes. Week one. All right. All right. Okay. More pressing here. I am. Uh, I did something very interesting yesterday. I went to Dick's Sporting Goods to buy some sporting goods. Of it a, seems like the right place to do. Right. <laughs> so one of those things was a mouthpiece, a mouth guard, Ugh. Uh, sh- uh, socks, and a, a new pair of rugby shorts because I'm two weeks out from the Aspen Rugger Fest. I'm doing my Colorado trip, going to Aspen to play two games of rugby, 8,000 feet in the, yeah, in the sky, by the way. Where the beer flows like wine. Yeah, and then I'm going to the Telluride Blues and Brews Music Festival. So I'm doing Aspen Telluride. I'm really excited taking the whole family. It's going to be uh, one of those things we're going to be better off on the other end. But I'm trying to stay in shape. I haven't played rugby in seven, eight years. I play on the beach sometimes when I'm out in California. We throw the ball around. It's a good workout. Fitness-wise, I'm doing all of my power to get that up, and I think I'm good. But I haven't tackled anyone. I haven't been tackled in a while, and that leaves me a little concerned. Well, you're, but And this is two weeks I'll be taking the field on that. The position you play, though, you don't really tackle, right? Like, you're not really... No, no, you do. I mean, I, made, I might just push someone into someone else for them to tackle. I'm going to try and... Take the high ground is a this, little bit. Is this like an anchorman fight, like where there's no, no, no but, there's no touching of the face? Like they understand no, no, no. what's at stake here. This is what's going to be. So I just turned forty five recently. I know I look like that's, I'm twenty eight. It's amazing. I know, shocker. It's amazing. So there's a forty five and over. We also have a fifty and over team. We're the Santa Monica Rugby Club. We're going to go there. So it's guys I used to play with forty five, forty six, forty seven, forty eight. So what you would imagine most guys aren't really in tip top shape, and they're going to take some short corners. <laughs> especially when you're at that altitude. The games are shorter. There's liberal substitutions, so no one's going to die out there Good. on exhaustion. But my concern is that maybe a 35-year-old guy slips in there or we're dealing with one of these CrossFit guys who's 45 and I have to tackle him, and he's going 100 miles an hour. CrossFit guys you can never trust. I go, but... what are you doing, dude? Yeah. Go to the 50 and over. <laughs> right. Or go to the 35s. <laughs> So what, like, what's the bruising situation at altitude? Like, I know if you drink at altitude, it hits you harder. It, I know that from personal experience. But if you're at altitude, do you also bruise like a peach? I don't know. I'm gonna find. I, I, generally, when I've been at altitude, I'm not doing any exercise. That's been a rule of thumb of mine for many years. Fact. I'm a sea level exerciser. <laughs> On the beach in Santa Monica, the old sand anywhere workout. where the air is thick, I will take it all in. What's the shirt policy? Like, do you, are you the guy that? Are, are you first to take your 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 uniform off? You're like, asking some interesting interesting questions there. What's the short situation with the rugby? Shorts you want to make them short so they don't have a big target to tackle. You there you slide go. off the tackles. Nice, and you just muck it up as much as you can. So two weeks. I actually gonna I, the old mouthpiece where you have to meld into your mouth. I hate those. Well, I have to do that. I'll be doing that tonight. It's the worst. You burn the roof of your mouth. Yes. You're supposed to do it while it's hot. And I just think of these old plastic ones that you just were three bucks. Now they're twenty five bucks. Ew. And I, my my wife was saying, get the better one. They're your teeth, for crying out loud. And they have a cherry vanilla taste in them. Oh, that's good. Or you can buy different flavors. Uh, you won't get tired of that at See, all. See, I never bought a mouthpiece in years, so this is something new. So, <laughs> uh, kids, you have it really good. Back in, we had a piece of plastic we just shoved in there. And you basically, you bought like eight of them, and you'd use one every two games and throw it away. Who's covering, like, is anybody covering this? Maybe no, not for me. No, 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 is your wife, oh, yeah, hold on now. Somebody's got to get video of this so that I'll, this can air. We'll probably do a little bit of that. But Somewhere. It's, the team in Aspen's very good. They're very well regarded. They have a great home field advantage, for crying out loud. Yeah, they're out, they have their altitude legs. So, yeah, uh, I, I, as we get closer, I'm going to get a little bit worried. I'll keep, I'll, I'll keep you guys uh, up to speed, <laughs> and maybe someone can talk me out of it. But I'm excited. I've been running, uh, getting after it. Maybe I'll swim a little bit. Have you been lifting at all? You've been working yes, on cardio. Bit, like, you need a shell, you know? Some light lifting along the way. Nothing too heavy because at this point. You've got to be able to stay fleet afoot. Correct. Okay. Where were, you may not be worried. Now two weeks out, we are worried for you. Okay, I'm worried. I'm 
like <laughs> Ryan, <laughs> Ryan was very concerned when you brought. I was listening to the show when it was you and Ryan, and Ryan brought it up, or you brought it up, and Ryan was like, "This is not a good idea." No, this is poorly that thought ship, out. That ship has sailed. All, All right, right, so wish me luck. Uh, if you want to be down in Aspen, uh, September fourteenth, fifteenth, come out, film, and yeah. provide it there. But you'd be welcome. I'll buy you a coffee. Everybody wants to be in Aspen. It's just getting there to see this. There's a lot of good music coming out. Yeah. I just want to give a few tips of what I, I download music at a, at a rapid pace. Uh, the new um, album by Queens of the Stone Age. Another new album by uh, Grizzly Bear. I really enjoy. Uh, some really good music coming out. Uh, Brockhampton. Excellent. That sure. just came out. So I, I go off the, the beaten path a bit, but Taylor Swift had a new album, and this is creating all the stir. Yeah, the album's right? coming out in November. You're really excited for this release. I was excited for this song. I was excited because it's... What? <laughs> Because it kind of came out. Yeah. I'm sure I'll hear it ad ad nauseum on every radio station. Every outlet will have it. Well, so I didn't like, and this isn't just a company shill job here, but like I didn't love it when I heard it and it was all over Twitter and I was like, oh, I kind of forgot that it was coming out. But then I saw that ESPN had put it with a college football promo and they sort of spliced it together like a sizzle reel. And I was like, okay. And I said, Saruti, what, and Smalls, I said this to you too. What, like the date came out and I said, I hate myself already because I don't like it. But in two weeks, I'm going to talk myself into it, and now I'm just bopping along to it. And here we are. Comes are, are on you the radio, guys, and yeah. I can't hear you, Saruti. I said, here we are, two weeks later, and every time it comes on the radio, I don't change it. You don't change it? You like it? And I hate myself for Michelle, it. Michelle? Yes, and I hate myself, too. It's a terrible song. But? I change it every time. You still right. change it. I'm going to download it. it. You're staying true to it. Basically, her... Music. I, I listen because I listen to all the music on my on my the, the download music I have, but I'll download yeah. it because I think it's important we all listen to this because you'll feel like a fool. Like, have you heard the new Taylor Swift song that's been played everywhere? And I go, no, right. I haven't. Like her her music. I don't want to say is all this her the music song here. Yeah, but this song is like this. This is French fries. It, there's no substance. Is that the name of it? French it's, fries. There's no that's substance. A name. No, it, like, it, hear me out. No substance. Uh, it's bad for you, and you, f- you. But you can't stop eating it. And you feel worse about yourself after the fact. That's the genius. That's what it is. But that's the genius of it. That's why she is the biggest, one of the two yeah. or three biggest recording artists. And she's got some beef with Katy Perry here. And here's my theory By on the way, that. it's just what you just said about Kay, uh, Taylor Swift. I used to say that about Dawkins back in the day. <laughs> about Dawkins. Uh, Katy Perry's having trouble selling out arenas. Like selling out her tour. She got a tour. She's she might mega arenas, have to correct? Cancel. Yeah, she might have to cancel some of her dates or switch to a smaller venue. Taylor Swift doesn't have that problem. Hey, Toad's Place in New Haven's available if you need a quick show. <laughs> Katy Perry to get you from New York to Boston. New Haven's where it's at for the music yep. scene. This is what we talk about when we're efforting Adam Schefter on the program. I'd also like to say my guy Action Bronson, who's a big soccer fan, has a new album out, too, that I enjoy. But we can't play it for our college football. You got? No, okay, good. <laughs> Bomb Bomb Baklava, as he likes to be called now, Action Bronson. Very good. But again, not safe for work. This all sounds made up. This is These true. sound like fake things. Oh, yeah. But, but okay. Downloading music machine. There's a lot of alt rock, and I, I like to listen to some heavy rock. But the kids are kind of, you know, these kids that would, that are doing science experiments that look like that, like the Revenge of the Nerds kids. They're yeah. now the musicians. You're gonna fit right in in Colorado, man. <laughs> you are the Ryan Rosillo Show. Peter Burns joining us here on the Rosillo Show on ESPN Radio. From the SEC network, from previously Colorado, where yeah. Max is headed out get to a point or two. bruise his body at the Aspen Rugger Fest. Uh, Peter, we, Max and I, feel as though the SEC take Alabama away. The SEC is as vulnerable as it's been in a long time. Are we right or are we wrong? Well, as a proud member of the SEC network, gentlemen, I would tell you that's <laughs> outlandish. But uh, as a sports and i got to be honest with you. I mean, that's exactly what we're saying right now, boys. I mean, yeah. listen, it has been Alabama and a bunch of also ran as of last year. Everybody kind of beat themselves up. I mean, what, no team won more than eight games? I mean, frankly, it was it was embarrassing. And, and we go back and look at it this year, and I'm, i am i got to be honest with you, I'm frightened for what we may see in opening weekend. I think the matchups are just – uh, hellaciously bad for the SEC. I mean, you look at Florida, who, my goodness, Max and Randy, if you guys, Randy, I'd put you as a wide receiver. Max, probably more of like a, like a, maybe a, maybe a nimble defensive lineman guy, like an outside edge. <laughs> I'll take it. Jim, Jim McElwain may need you right now uh, and see if you got any, any uh, eligibility left because this is nuts with their matchup against Michigan. 
uh, uh, really one of the games that I was really looking forward to. And then now, you know, you lose 10 players coming into that game. Um, that, that's a brutal matchup, even though Harbaugh's squad is young. And honestly, this is a nightmare matchup, I think, for Alabama going up against Florida State. you got DeAndre Francois, um, who's nimble. He can move around. And you've got a really young Alabama defense. I mean, you, you know, listen, it's every year, guys, we talk about wash, rinse, repeat, right, where you could just – Hey, they're getting, it's like playing NCAA football on PlayStation. Like you had a five-star recruit, the next five-star guy is up, right? Well, sooner or later, that's got to catch up with you, and they're going to meet Jimbo Fisher, and uh, that, that, that's an offense that can move, move, move the ball pretty well. Peter, I, I, I love the SEC Network. I watched you guys last night. I did watch some Arkansas, Florida, and m That may be I, – I, I could not take <laughs> – Enough college football at this point. You first class effort from the SEC Network, but I believe you guys need a better conference right now to back up that first class production you guys do. And I hope it comes that way. And as dire as you made it may sound in the first weekend, is there what is everyone saying there in the building about a team that could rise up and smack Alabama if they get that chance? Yeah, I mean, honestly, you know, I mean, the, the first thing goes to Auburn. Auburn's defense looked a whole lot better with Kevin Steele taking over the D, the as a D quarter major last year. Um, and I, and I think with Jared Siddham, remember the hype about Jeremy Johnson two years ago? They a lot of people have said, well, hold on, this is the same hype machine. Well, it's different. It's a whole lot different. Jared Stidham, I think, is ready. Everybody I've talked to down at Auburn says this kid, when he showed up, he was ready for that spotlight, where I think that spotlight, guys, was a thrust upon Jeremy Johnson. I don't know if he felt comfortable in that position. And then there was Chip Lindsay, the offensive coordinator. I think Gus Malzahn has to honestly stay the hell out of the kitchen, has to say, you know what, this is his offense. I'm going to let him run it. And if that's the case, yeah, I mean, Alabama is going to be vulnerable. And the other thing is, too, I have no idea what Matt Canada is going to bring to LSU football. I, I assume it is going to be astronomical. Like, we're going to be, like, you know, you know, like in Cousin Eddie, like, I wouldn't have been more surprised if I would have woke up with my head sewn on the carpet when Cousin Eddie shows up in Lampoon's vacation. Like, yeah. I, I, I think that's going to be the offense that LSU is going to run, and we're going to look at each other and think, where, where is this LSU offense or this, you know, idea of putting these five-star athletes in space? Where, where in the world has this been for the last eight years? Because this, this is a difference maker. All right, talking with Peter Burns of the SEC Network with us here on the uh, Ryan Rosilla Show. Peter, I'm looking at two sort of, uh, I don't know, South Carolina, Will Muschamp, not a lot of people expect a ton not from them this year, it. but you got South Carolina mm. opening with an NC State team a lot of people like, and you got Tennessee opening up against Georgia Tech. Of those two, which SEC team is most vulnerable? Uh, I, I mean, I definitely would put South Carolina, and, and I love this kid, Jake Bentley. I mean, I, I was down in Columbia earlier this spring and sat with him, and his dad's the running backs coach, Bobby Bentley, over there. And I asked, I asked Bobby, I was like, well, when did you know he was going, that Jake Bentley, the quarterback at South Carolina, when did you know your son was going to be pretty special? And, guys, he said there was, I think, his seventh grade season, he never once got tackled, not once in the entire season. Whoa. Either he threw for a touchdown, ran for a touchdown, or ended up getting out of bounds the entire season. I'm like, how is this even possible? Um, so he's a good, good story. I think Will Muschamp's changed a lot. I think he he knows when to go to the whip, rather than just being kind of the the banshee that we saw him, you know, mm-hmm. over the last couple of years, where he's just he's so excited and he's so fired up. Uh, and I, I think. I think he is he's going to put himself in a better situation just NC State man is uh that defensive line is for real and I don't think that offensive line is going to be in, in very good shape for South Carolina coming up this year and I don't think that defense is going to be very good either but um I, I like Tennessee I wish we could ban all option teams from playing week one and week 14 <laughs> of the college football season because nobody Nobody likes I – mean, I hate fade routes. I hate cut blocking even worse. Yeah, yeah, nobody <laughs> likes it. Nobody. Yeah. Peter Burns of the SEC Network giving Marty Smith a run for best hair south of the Mason-Dixon line. Peter, <laughs> thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Later, boys. The Ryan Rossillo Show. Rossillo. Before we go, I want to do one impression yeah. that I came up with this week. I know it's very dated. Oh, okay. But Placido Domingo, the famous tenor, singing, doing the uh, the production of Annie. All right. Are you ready for it? I'm ready. 
It's a hard knock life for us. It's a hard knock life for us. Instead of treated, we get tricked. Instead of kisses, we get kicked. It's a hard knock life. Thank you very much. Uh, you came up with that this week? Came up like 10 well, minutes in the shower. Well done. I was singing. Well done. And you know, it was a little Spanish accent with the trying to the tenor tone, which I tr- kind of can get there. Yeah. So there you go. That folks, was good. Free of charge. Really good. All right, let's see if Scott in Louisiana has a more random combination than that. <laughs> Scott? Yeah, hey, how you doing today, man? Hey, Scott. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like to hear him uh, do Christopher Walken explaining why Lamar Jackson will not win the Heisman Trophy again this year. <laughs> I love the specifics. That's you do good. it because I did a walk-in impression a couple weeks ago and it was awful. Well, then you do it. Then. No, then you your, do it. Okay, so why Lamar Jackson won't win the Heisman Trophy? Right. Guys. Got what appears to be <laughs> dynamite sound. Here's the thing. You're down Louisiana playing quarterback, and your name is Lamar Jackson. Your stats. Or Louisville. Have to what I say. L- Louisiana. Who's telling this? Sorry, my, my g- pro- Who's telling the story? Sorry, Mr. Walker. Me. <laughs> so shut up. <laughs> you got your stats have to beat the stats from last year. That's how it's got to go. Thanks, Scott. Look at the whole crew in, Lu- in Louisiana. <laughs> Got what appears hey, to stop, be. Hey, stop raining on my segment, yes. Scott. You're doing di- too good. Dynamite sound. Hey. Uh, my home state, Virginia. Woo! A- Amber, what's going Amber. on? Hi. Um, yeah, this is Amber from Virginia Beach, and I would love to hear someone do some Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do a McConaughey? Uh, yeah. I got to ramp up for this one. <laughs> Well, there was nothing specific, but she's from no. Virginia, so from let's Virginia, talk Virginia about Beach, uh, Tidewater. Maybe uh, Virginia Tech. Well, that's not that's from that's the, fine. You can do Virginia, Virginia Tech. Tech. Do it. I don't yeah. know anything about the Virginia football team. Okay, that's all right. They're not good. Uh, hey, <laughs> you can say what you want about uh, you can say what you want about Virginia Tech this season, but Bud Foster's still there. <laughs> that's more Jack Nicholson than I know. <laughs> Isn't that more Nicholson than hey, McConaughey? Bud Foster. Guys, Bud Foster, it. man. Oh, you do it, boys. Uh, boys. Boy. Go Boys, uh, got a good football team there. Black what are you? Bird. You're doing George W. Bush, man. I don't. Uh, Texas is Texas, man. <laughs> That's the let's thing. Try, let's try Boys, this. got any beers? Let's try this again. Virginia Tech's going to be good until they run into the Longhorns. Be a bill. You know like, what I mean, Shelly B? <laughs> be a lot cooler if you did. Party. <laughs> a, <laughs> there you go. Party Takes the, a while to ramp into it. Party at the Moon Tower. Got about six kegs. Be there. You ever work with John About Wiley over in the in Yes, production? he sounds like Wiley him. Wiley sounds like him. Let's get yes, to Mitch in Toledo. we got less than a minute. Mitch, what's up? Hello again, Ryan. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> How? <laughs> that rides off to the... <laughs> that, is, that Carl Edwards is one fine-looking youngster, isn't he? <laughs> Man, <laughs> I never would have thought a NASCAR driver could throw such a good fastball. <laughs> right went. out of the bullpen, and he can drive a car like no one's business. I keep waiting for him to do a backflip after a save. <laughs> I, I'm still waiting. That Mitch Mitch hijacked the whole deal. Hey, That's, Mitch, I like your t- uh, Toledo football. is going to be good this season. There we go. Don't lie to the college. Logan guys. Woodside, Don't, dark horse uh, Kaisman candidate. He's been reading. USA, baby, tonight cheating. against Costa Rica, New Jersey. We believe. <laughs> For listening to the Ryan Rossillo Show podcast. You can check out the show live weekdays at 1 Eastern on ESPN Radio, the ESPN app, and on ESPN News. The Ryan Rossillo Show podcast.